mortals, I'm Yinsen, welcome back to Hydranair. If you didn't know I was Yinsen, then what the hell are you doing on like episode 7 of Hydranair? Go and watch the other one. So we're going to load up the game. We've gotten pretty far in the game so far. We've gotten very, very far in the game so far. The fun value of events are not supposed to be convincing for dumb theories. It's got a fun value to make the game fun. Without them, it would be less interesting. Yeah, I fully agree. Although, I have had more people than not come onto my channel while I was playing Undertale, while I was theorycrafting and saying, Hey man, uh, your theory's all wrong because you're not looking at the fun value of events. And again, they don't tell us anything. People just don't really want to cite their sources when they say things like that. Oh my god, is that the Jensen, the best Hydraenea player in the world? Yes, we have speedrun the entire... Actually, no, there is a speedrun leaderboard on the official wiki for this game. Uh, we just crafted a sword, didn't we? And the guard rejected it, so a little bit of a uh, little bit of a wet, damp fart in that in that instance. Yeah, there is a speedrunning section of the wiki, uh, like first person to make a million dollars and stuff like that. And the high score at the moment is in one hour. Someone can make one million dollars in one hour, and that is just absolutely crazy to me to think of that someone could actually beat this game in an hour. You got to have god rolls out the ass as well. You got to have absolutely just a billion god rolls. Okay, so we do have the sword in the back, don't we? Because it's all of our core stone. Yes, it is here. So what I think went wrong is that we kind of put these ingots in the wrong order. I think that what we needed to do was actually, instead of just crafting it all hodgepodge like we did, we probably actually needed to order the ingots. It is also a six-ton sword by memory, so I, I don't know how effective it is necessarily, other than a paperweight for the world's largest sheet of paper. Highly doubt it, though. Okay, we'll come on in through here. Yeah, so I mentioned um, the album we're listening to today is Highly Suspect's 2022 release, which I completely missed. And the drummer for the music project I'm working on, Epic Flying Horse, uh, probably sent him around the channel a bunch of different times, especially if you've just seen the last demonologist video I made. What the hell are we resting on? Uh, he said he'd really, really like to learn this. And my one is Forget Me Too by... Machine Gun Kelly and Halsey, because Machine Gun Kelly did actually release a single good album, and it's that one. So uh, we're going to be learning those two songs, and if we get good enough at them, we're going to record them, we're going to stick them up on the second channel, and then I'll tell you guys what the second channel is called, so you can go and see it. Ah, oh, there's no harm in telling you, it's called Decapitore. It's only got a couple of subscribers at the moment, and it's uh, the icon on it is the Doom Slayer's Mark from Doom. Uh, we can jump over here, can't we? Yes, let's do that. That's the music project I'm working on. It's going to be a big collaborative effort. Uh, we still can't find a guitarist. I am a guitarist. I don't want to do guitars. I am going to be the vocalist instead. Can we melt this down? No. Oh, wait. What if we take this up to the giant iron forge? Where we craft things. Oh, actually, I should probably go to the other side of the screen as well. Just because when I pick this up, you can actually see the statistics of this weapon down the bottom left-hand corner. Pretty interesting. The new Demonologist video was fun. I know, it was really funny, wasn't it? Like, not a... I don't think it was the best, like, recording session that we ever had, but the the actual editing was just so well done. I'm really happy that I've kind of, like, dedicated the weekend to making those videos now. Hey, Yinsen, have you ever made 8-bit, 16-bit music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started on that when I was a, when I was a little teenager. Oh, apparently I can't drop this in here. Oh, man. That's all of our core stone. Inside the sword, that sucks. That sucks absolute ass. Yeah, um, I do a lot of music producing. I use Reaper as my digital audio workstation. I started on it. It's very, very uh, good for high levels of control, but it's really, really hard to uh, kind of learn initially if you're ever interested in mastering your own music. I wonder if we can just melt this down in here. Probably not. I've done it before and it's so fun crafting presets for the noises. The noises are just so nice. Yeah, they are pretty nice, aren't they? They kind of give me a little bit of nostalgia as well, because I was around for when chiptune was kind of like the the bare minimum of video game soundtracks. Why is this one open and the other ones aren't? It is cabled then, isn't it? We cabled everything in? I'm pretty sure we did. Did we? Yeah, we definitely did. Why is this open? Doesn't make any sense. Okay, we are getting resources. Now, we're not actually getting any core stone, which is a little bit sad. We've left this running for a wee while. None of these machines are pumping out resources that have core stone in them. So I'm not actually entirely sure how effective this little method we've got here is. We might want to diversify the machines out. I don't know why this is either, because we're at the lowest block in this area, so we should just be getting all of the end game resources 
really, really fast. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stick all of these ingots into the receptacles that they belong in. Yep, that's gold. Good. That one is clausium. That goes in here. And this one is going to go over here in the iron. Now, we do kind of need to go back to the MILF's aquifer and turn it on, just because we're not getting any core stone. And if we're not getting any core stone, we're not getting any new machine. So we're going to have to do that very, very shortly. Okay. Okay. Ah, good. It closed. So that is functioning. Wonderful. That is not heating up whatsoever. I think we have actually kind of just like wasted all of our resources into the sword, which is not amazing. So let's go ahead. We'll leave. I also kind of like sorted out the, the workshop area yesterday. What's in here? Literally nothing. It's a little bit messy, but it's pretty clean if you kind of consider just how messy the game can get. Okay, let's go to the Mills Aquifer. We're going to turn everything on and we're going to see if we can't get some core stone because we kind of need core stone. I wish there was like a bin of some sorts because we could definitely reduce the load on the game if we could just immediately have a sorting system down at all of the machines in Mills Aquifer, uh, kind of diverting everything that's not core stone and cloutium straight into kind of like a bin or something like that. Funny how today I was in a neutral route in Undertale Yellow. Oh, that's right, Undertale Yellow. That's also one that people have re been requesting on math. Mass. I thought the funny syringe thing would happen, but then he just threw it. I have not played Undertale Yellow. I have not played it. It's It looks really, really fun, though. People have requested it lots. Okie dokie. So, elevator's going to drag us all the way up. Nice. It takes ages, though. It'd be nice if there was a mod that just speeds up this elevator. Good. Let's go down to the Mills Aquifer. We'll see what we already have, and we'll see if we need to turn the machines on, because we probably do. We probably do need to turn all of the machines on. Go play Undertale Yellow. I will eventually. It's probably going to be the one that replaces Ribbit in the YouTube vote. Let's face it. I say all of this uh, knowing that everybody is going to be able to vote for the replacement games in the Discord as well. Okay, so back at Mills Aquifer, everything is definitely turned off. We're getting a little bit of frame drop here, annoyingly. We used all of our Cloutium and our Core Stone to make that sword, but the sword was just not good enough. But, information is power. We did learn. Failure is still discovery. Go ahead, go over here. Well, we're going to have to repair this little wang doodle right here. Let's just go ahead and shovel all of these spear watsma dingles in there. Whoops, didn't want to do that. Uh, put that maybe facing... Uh, all of these are different orientations, which is a little strange. I'll just put that there. I wanted this. We'll stick it in that one. Excellent. Uh, we also got more spanners. I'm going to stick it over here because I'm pretty sure this is the next one up the chain. Still 12 spanners in there. What else have we got? Six in that one. We're definitely going to need to put more in here. How much is that? Seven. What? That's less. That's less than we stuck in. Okay, 17. That's what I'm happy with. And 17 in both of those. That's pretty good. Awesome. Now, we were kind of halfway through the path to a core stone pipe, weren't we? Uh, let's turn on this conveyor belt right here. Damn, that is a huge chunk of resources. I already see in-game resources in it. Like, this right here is, is core stone. So why aren't we getting any core stone in the other mine? Like, we've got a lot of core stone pumping in through here. That's super weird. That's super, super weird. Ah. Wow, wait. It literally made me cry and scream. Undertale Yellow. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. I'll keep that in mind that it, it may make me cry and scream, but I am a pretty calm guy, ultimately. Ignore the ranging, but it's actually a good game. I've heard. I've heard uh, quite a lot of people tell me that it's a really, really good game. Okay, uh, saw, magnifying glass. We've got everything up here that we don't necessarily need. These blocks of iron can go straight into there and here as well. I want to watch all of the resources pump into these machines before we go down south and kind of uh, figure out why everything's not pumping in as it should be. It seems like this setup right here is the only kind of option that we have at the moment, which is a little bit frustrating, got to be said. It's, a, it's just a little bit frustrating. Also kind of slow. I remember this being a lot faster. Weird. Okay. So first, we have the iron. Very nice. We've got a couple of blocks of iron. And we've got lots and lots of gold that filled up fast. We're probably going to have a little bit of clautium. Oh, no clautium at all. But we do have some core stone. Yep, there's one clautium being filtered up. Okay, we did get quite a bit of uh, core stone out of that one. But I'm not entirely sure how useful that's going to be. So, 
we were doing that one quest as well. We were trying to make that sword so that we have unlimited prospecting guild tokens. There's a little bit of iron right there too. Go ahead and throw that in there. Get the construction hammer and we'll put that there too. Okay, so now I kind of want to go around and figure out why the Ice Helm Tier 3 machines are not puffing out core stone, because they should be. Hello, Red Rux. Hello, hello, hello. Undertale Yellow feels like Undertale 2. That's pretty good. That's pretty good to know, actually. I would like an Undertale sequel. If only there was, like, such a thing as an Undertale sequel, even made by Toby Fox himself. If there was a game that came out after Undertale that Toby Fox made, I would definitely play the ever-loving hell out of it. I'd probably even play it before Undertale, to be quite honest. Uh, so I'm going all the way over here for seemingly no reason. I wanted to get the quad because it's kind of useless over here and we're already away from my cell anyway. So let's go ahead and grab this bad boy. And we'll go back to Ice Helm, where I will probably open a wiki and try and figure out why it's not mining out the core. Core stone. Because it is a little bit frustrating. And I think I've actually gotten further than most people do when they play this game. Annoyingly. Very annoyingly. Okay. Do a little bit of a drift around there. And we want to come up this hill right here. Very cash money. I don't know if we can get up the second little lift here, but I hope we got enough momentum. We did! Just, just enough momentum. Pretty crazy. Undertale Green win? Uh, never. It's never happening. Undertale Red? Also never happening. Undertale Red? Uh, uh, I think that's Ribbit. That's supposed to be the creepy bastard one, right? And that is normal Undertale. Alright, so... We'll go down here. I am gonna kind of, like, fiddle around and try and figure out why everything is not crafting. Because we do need the generation of core stone down here as well as at the MILF's Aquifer. To be able to... Oh, we just missed that one. To be able to uh, get that sword so that we can get the really, really good intake pipes. We definitely don't have any core stone, right? No. It's just it's just not mining up from here. It's only gold and the other bits of crap that we don't necessarily want anymore. Like, gold is pretty much useless. This one isn't even pumping for some reason. That's weird as hell. Mm, we did try to stick it over on this side too, didn't we? And it... it, it didn't really do anything else, did it? Oh, I've already forgotten how to spin. There we go. So if we pipe this in... We already... Didn't we already try this yesterday? Yeah, the light's just not going on. So either the pressure here is not amazing, or this is literally just a really bugged area of the game and we shouldn't be playing here in the first place. Really hard to tell. Really hard to tell. Really hard to tell the difference. We might just want to move the machines over somewhere else that may function as intended. Probably should get some shovels over here as well. Go ahead and grab a handy dandy shovel. Because if it's on this side, we probably just want to stick something up its bum anyway. Right there. Is the light on now? No. What if we pipe it in? Still no. Okay, so I don't think it's an issue with the pressure. That's the thing. And it's got nothing to do with the piping systems either. What are the devs of Undertale Yellow? Made more Undertale variations? That'd be pretty cool, honestly. Imagine playing those Undertale games in the Souls order. That may actually end up being Deltarune. We just don't know. Okay. I'm just going to plug this in anyway, despite the fact that it's not pumping anything out. And I'm going to, really quickly, open up a wiki. We're going to take a look. We're going to take a look together. Why it's not pumping out. Ice Helm. No. Core Stone being mined no core stone yep so this is pretty common i think no core stone in ice helm t1 t2 is not top to bottom but go left to right so ah the further back right okay that makes a lot of sense actually let's go ahead get our pickaxe and we'll just mine all the way to the back of this room that does make a lot of sense well ish kind of makes kind of makes a lot of sense get our pickaxe and we'll start mining this place out we're probably going to be doing this for a wee while. We're going to do some excavation. We're probably going to get really, really far away from uh, this area here. And then we're going to blow a couple of nukes. We're going to blow some nukes so that we don't necessarily have to uh, dig all of this out ourselves. Okay. I think I was standing on the shovel there. Let's actually get the shovel out of the way. Right there. No! Give it back! No! I'm stuck! Shovel! Why? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, get no! Not the... Not the dirt! Oh my god, that couldn't have gone any more wrong. Okay, let's drop this here, not on the conveyor belt. 
And we'll put this on the conveyor belt, because quite frankly, we don't need it just yet. Uh, the hook centralizer also doesn't work on tools, apparently. All right, let's start mining through. Sounds great. You should play it, Insim. Uh, I am not Insim. I'm, I'm hardly even human these days, to be quite honest. Hardly even human. All right, let's mine all the way through. I think we're pretty close to the back rooms anyway. You hear that, YouTube algorithm? The back rooms is where we are almost at. All right, so we now need a tier three pickaxe to go even further in. So these aren't gonna be mining core stone until we start mining into that, which means we need prospecting guilds tokens to get into the tier three mine. Unless we detonate a nuke. Let's try detonating a nuke. It might be a little bit silly, a little bit irresponsible to do it so close to the machinery, but it may allow us access all the way back here. Uh, maybe like, can I put it there? No. Like, no, maybe not there. Huh? Huh? Put it there. And we have to go and get a lever as well, so let's go ahead and do that. Oop, just hit my head on something. Don't know what it was, but it was something. We need a lever. Okay, let's use this one because we didn't place it. And it looks hideous. Ooh yeah. Did you know there's holy water in the back rooms? You should just pour it on you. There's no holy water in the back rooms. Go there's no god in the back rooms. I think that's the whole point of it. Okay, so this could go horribly wrong on account of us uh, doing this literally right beside all of the machinery. But I'm willing to take the risk. Boom! All right, let's see if we've just blown up all of our machinery. We may have just blown up all of our machinery. In which case, we can just reload the save, to be quite honest. Uh, I'm blind. Where are we? Oh, it didn't blow up any of the machinery. Perfect. What did it blow up? Okay, we did actually get kind of like egress into the T3 area, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but we can't escape. Oh, no. Oh, perfect. There is actually a button that unsticks us right there. Nice. Hookie. Let's go ahead, grab this here pickaxe. This is a T2 pickaxe as well. So we are definitely in T3 territory. We'll mine out a little walkway, I think. And then we'll keep on detonating nukes in here. I'm glad we bought so many of these nukes. Great idea, me. Thank you, me. Okay, good. And we probably want to stick the next one, like, about here, I would say. Let's do that. Boop. Put that on the ground. We'll get a couple more nukes over here. And then we'll detonate into the mine. We want to go as far back as possible, apparently. Which I'm very happy to do. I'm very happy to do this. Mr. Beast, Chris, Controversy, Dr. Disrespect, Drizm, Joe Howley. Oh my god, you're really uh, calling down the, the YouTube gods here, aren't you? They're red rocks. Okay, let's uh, come around here. And we'll go up the staircase that we placed down there in the last previous episode. We'll get ourselves a button, a nice button. Because if there's any efficient way of detonating a nuke, it's to link it up to a button and then detonate it right next to the nuclear warhead. Boop. And boom, we've blown into the T3 soil. Sweet Jesus, my ears. Yeah, that YouTube algorithm. Chris is Ralsey. Guess it confirmed. What a friend inside me means Toby Fox will make Western theme chapter three. Hear that YouTube algo? Yeah, 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 yeah. Get the YouTube algorithm to, it gets like the YouTube alg algorithm into, into thinking we're playing a different game. That isn't a puzzle game. A puzzle simulator for engineers. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, we found some T3 soil that we can't really mine through. Never mind, we are actually nowhere near it. Excellent. Now, I don't really know how the nuke works. I don't know if it kind of like does an area of effect. I think it does an area of effect. But it could also kind of like just blow X amount of chunks in a line around it as well. Kind of hard to tell. Let's go ahead, blow all of that. So we want to detonate another one just into here. Don't Actually, we're not really getting too far into the mine with these nukes. Okay, let's go find an easier quest to do so that we can get ourselves a T3 pickaxe a lot faster than we are getting them now. Because we definitely need one now. There should be a shovel inside of over here as well. Whoop. Got it. Good. Put this on the tool rack. So we need about a thousand prospecting guild tokens to get the T3 pickaxe. And I think it would be in our best interest just to do so anyway. So let's go and look for a quest that is a little bit easier than that god-awful one the king wants us to do. I don't know high drinks, more like Sans Undertale fan game. I don't think this is an Undertale fan game, uh, to be quite honest. Like, the thematic consistency isn't really there, other than the Deltarune theme of the humans being locked underground. 
And in this game, you can just leave. Pretty crazy. MatPat be like... MatPat did make a lot of insane theories. I feel like, unfortunately, like, MatPat did do a lot for theory crafting communities on the internet. And also, to be quite honest, I think he also pioneered the genre. But at the same time, I think he really dropped the ball on the Undertale stuff. Because uh, I've, see I've seen a lot of his thumbnails and stuff, and already they're completely incorrect. I don't want to see the justification. This is no evidence to support his theory whatsoever on the internet. I'm confident in saying that, having been uh, a player myself. Okay, let's take our quad and we'll go search for a person that will offer us a thousand prospecting guild tokens. Or we can go back to town and we can see whether or not there is less tokens that we could probably get. Okay, we'll come all the way over here. And we want to hang right here. There's a reason I didn't dive off the bridge this time. I didn't want to flip the quad because this thing is really fiddly to get back onto its head. Well, feet, I suppose. You don't really want it on its head, do you? So we'll come all the way over here and we want to go and follow this little green arrow. Want to take the road all the way to the left here. Do we drift around that corner there? Nice. And we want to come into this wee building right here. All right. How expensive is everything? Can't tell. Can't tell while the uh, while we're on the truck, unfortunately. What about these? Can we see just how much those things are? No, probably not, actually. Let's just get off it. Uh, we'll jump over here so we... The intake water pipe is pretty cheap. We already have a 173. So this pickaxe... Oh my god. We need 1,100 prospecting guild tokens. We can do, like, two quests, I suppose. And kind of, like, halve the load. Because we'll need, like, maybe 1,100 just as kind of, like, a base amount regardless. So we split that up into two 750s. We should be good. Should be good to go. Hey, guys. Anyone got a quest? Sorry. Sorry for running you down with my with my car. Uh, this guy just wants soup, doesn't he? Is it soup? No, he's only got 56 prospecting guild tokens. Uh, that is absolutely yucky. We do not want that whatsoever. I'm going to jackknife this... Uh, little car around we're gonna hit all three of these pedestrians right here nice and they're on the hills <gasps> nice this guy as well i'm gonna hit him there we go got him and there's one guy over here none of these people have quests so i'm just getting them out of the way really really quickly i thought of a stream idea when your channel grows bigger yeah i've thought of a bunch of them as well what's your idea what's your idea because i can't spoil my ideas they have to be surprises okay a lot of the stuff around here doesn't really seem to be populated, so I'm not entirely sure why we would be going back. We go to the agricultural place as well, but I'm almost damn certain that we're not really going to encounter anything over at the agricultural place, except for just agriculture quests, which don't give prospecting guild tokens. They, they only give you garbage. Hello there, sir. He doesn't have a quest. Let's go ahead and hit him with our car. I don't know where he went, but I'm sure he's dead now. All right, no one around here has any quests. Anything through here? I think we already checked around here. That guy usually has a quest. I'm surprised he doesn't right now. What is this? Have you ever seen this uh, graveyard before? Hello? You got any quests for me? Please? This looks like it moves. Well, maybe it doesn't. All right. I'm just gaslighting myself into thinking that there are mechanics that there aren't. Ooh. Everyone makes be right back screens and you review them on stream and pick one to use. I can't use other people's be right back screens. That's uh, that's that's plagiarism, and I I don't want to plagiarize on my channel. I'm taking a hard line on plagiarism, like real early in my channel as well, because it will bite me in the ass eventually if I ever do get lazy and just start stealing other people's content. I just don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I know XQC makes millions of dollars by uh, stealing other people's content, but he's the only one that can make millions of dollars by stealing other people's content. Because uh, Sniper Wolf, um, she, she she was the other person who did it, and she went down for being a, a piece of garbage who stole other people's content. You got a quest for me? Did you hear that? No, I did not. Okay. So we did find this uh, sword over at Ember's Cradle. I don't know what we get if we just like put all those on the all the artifacts on the podium, but you know, I'm sp I'm sure we'll figure it out eventually. That doesn't make sense. They're making them for me. People aren't gonna make me be right back screens. Come on, man. Oh, you are right, actually. If I do have a bigger channel, then I could probably provoke people into doing unpaid labor for me. Uh, for no cost to me. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Although, uh, I am probably just going to end up making one myself if I get big enough. 
to be quite honest, because that's how my channel has been going so far. And I've got all the spare time in the world. Bigger the catch, bigger the cash. Really? This guy is a grocer. He's not a fishmonger. So this guy only buys the vegetables. If you cast a fishing rod into some soil and you catch a potato, I don't really think it's the same as being able to catch a fish. I think that's more like just gambling. Okay, we can't go up there. So this guy over here wants some soup, doesn't he? Yeah, he wants some soup. Uh, I don't care about what she wants. This guy wants that huge sword, which we can't really get from just yet. There's not really a lot else that we can do now, is there? Unfortunately. Unless we kind of get the same setup that we have at the dungeon down in Milf's Aquifer. Why does no one have any quests? It's super strange. It's really, really weird. Okay, we'll go to the grocer, the kind of like the vegetable area, and then we'll see whether or not they've got quests as well, but I don't really think they will, to be quite honest. <sighs> I will, I can, I know how to edit, I will too. Okay, done. If you guys, if you two make one, I will judge the best one on stream, and then I'll pick one to use. But unfortunately, you have to make it on uh, Streamlabs OBS as a scene. <laughs> Just to really throw some more spanners in the works. No, I'm not going to make anybody do that. That's super annoying. Uh, okay, so we'll come around here. We'll ignore the bridge and our kind of like little area that we are mining up. We'll go straight over here. We want to go this way. That is a mining site that we don't want to set up at, at all, essentially. And over here is where the grocers are. I don't think we can... Oh yeah, we can get around here. I think we can kind of like squeeze this gap right here. Maybe do some off-roading. We just kind of like curl our wheels around. Good, we did it. Let's drift around there, spraying gravel and dirt into that lady's face. Hilarious. Still no quests. What a stingy world we have right here. Okay, we're going to need 400 core stone then. We literally do not have a choice. We're just going to have to get 400 core stone before we can really do anything else. Let's take a look at our crops. Because these have been going for a wee while now, haven't they? Oh, our tomatoes have grown. Nice. Okie dokie. Uh, yoink. Yoink. Excellent. We got three carrots out of that. That is beautiful. We don't have one of those machines that kind of like harvests things that you drive over. Oh, they're permanent. Oh, that changes literally everything. That changes everything. Oh, okay. We need a bucket. Do we have a bucket here? Surely we've had the foresight to get a bucket over here. There is a bowl. Ah, this pot will do the trick. No, it won't. We can't tip it. Booze! Does this require water? Yes, it does. Uh, we could probably just make a little walkway up here. Kind of elbow this in, like, I don't know, there? Yep, mm -hmm. let's put that... Oh, we can't place it on mm -hmm. there. We're probably going to have to... Whoops get an elbow exactly where we needed it. Drop the damn thing. Okay, good. And we'll throw that on the ground. We need an elbow pipe, which is this one right here. We are going to flip it. We're going to slip it. And then we're going to get this straight right here to encroach on the rock's territory. We'll use this rock. It's kind of like a shrine, I think. Good. And we'll hook that up there. Very nice. Very nice. And now we probably want to go get a bucket, don't we? So we need money. Which we have right here. 70 grand will probably get us a bucket. Let's be honest. Ooh, I'm still making one. I'm doing it out of free will. Okay, I love to hear that. I, I don't really want to enslave anybody in my chat necessarily, which is why I do everything on my channel myself. Uh, I'm going to take a, a nice brisk walk over to the agriculture place. Okay, I'll come over here. We are walking through the forest. We're getting some nice fresh air into our lungs, which is awesome. We're kind of like just wasting a little bit of time while we wait for the, uh, the, uh, the, the, what was it? The, um, the gore stone to start generating in the milk aquifer. Yeah, I'm taking a look at your goods. They're pretty good. They only got tomatoes and carrots though. That's a shame. Uh, we've got all these tools. We need a bucket. Bucket, please. Anyone selling a bucket around here? Are you taking the pith? <laughs> Are you really taking the pith? You, won't find you got any buckets? No, just a greenhouse. Things. Seriously? My dudes! Okay, I'm gonna buy this thing. This cropper right here, so that we don't ever have mm -hmm. to harvest by hand mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Oh, we need the guild co Oh, I thought that we could uh, maybe take that as a bucket, but we can't. Alright, we're walking back into town. Then we'll get a bucket. 
just so we can put all of our vegetables in it, then we can dump those vegetables into the seed processing item. That would be a good idea, I think. I don't know how we're going to automate... I don't, I don't think we're going to be able to automate the agriculture, unfortunately. I think we have to harvest it with the machine, and that's kind of like the peak of what we can do, which is a little bit of a shame. But who knows? Maybe there is actually a, a logic system that'll allow us to do so. Okay. So we'll come over here. I remember there are buckets in not this store, but the one next to it. And that is the conveyor nation. We don't necessarily want to go into there. I want to go over here, put this money in the receptacle. We want to buy this bucket. 12 bucks. Nice. We still have 70 grand. I'm going to put that in the bucket. Now we're going to walk all the way back. I got the goods if you got Just for a nice little brisk walk. Get out steps in. This guy is a revolting ponytail. Jesus Christ, man. This guy watched Barbie once and thought, I could be that. I could be Barbie. I'll be Barbie. Funny. Okay, I'll come up here. This is a strange album. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about Highly Suspect's 2022 release. Like, it's got a couple of... It's got a couple of good songs, but... Ultimately, it's strange. Like, it's catchy enough. It's, it's just strange. I don't think we'll rotate it... All the way. I think we'll listen to it once, then we'll move on to another Highly Suspect album. One that I actually know is going to be just a banger the whole way through. Okay, good. Going to go ahead and drop all of this right over here. At our really disgusting looking... This is gross. This is a gross setup that we've got, to be honest. All right, let's go ahead. We'll grab these carrots. We'll put it in the bucket. And then we want to take this money and we want to stick it in... Probably this cart right here. This seems to be our agricultural supplies cart. Now let's take these carrots. We'll go up, 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 all the way up here. And we will jam this into the t top of the... Okay, we've accidentally made a jumping puzzle. That is terrifying to look at. Okay, let's drop. Nice. Where the sacks go? There they are. Excellent. Okay, so we got a few more carrot seeds. Good, let's go and plant these bad boys. One right here. Good. One right here. One right here. Oh my god, we got heaps of them. Hey, nice! Okay, this is going to be the line of tomatoes, I think. So, we probably need about three tomatoes to kind of fill out the area that we did not plant in. Go ahead and do that right now. We're getting a little bit of frame drop here. We might want to kind of change how the sprinkler system is working. Maybe not make it go every single second. Alright, that is three right there. Go ahead, grab these, and we'll dump them right into the seed creator. And jump up on here. Uh, is that going to go in? Yes. Zinger. Good. Let's go here. Drop that on the ground. Now we will throw this into the soil. Going to put one there. Good. And one there. Good. And one there. And we still have spears. It's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and drop that on the soil so it's easy to see. Okay. So we could probably actually just like expand out that way as well. We probably want to cover this entire field. I think in agriculture, but that may crash the game preemptively before we get to the DLC, which is way off there in the in the distance. Bazinga! I'm making the thing, by the way. Awesome. Uh, stick it in the fan art page when you finish with it. I'll take a look at it. We'll see just who can make the best one, or if I need to stick like a, a randomization effect on it, and uh, it, it kind of like randomizes all of the fan art. That'd be kind of cool, actually, just like a showcase of the fan art as as it all goes along. That'd be awesome. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that. Okay. If you guys, by the way, if you guys stick like a little blank square somewhere, I'll fill that in with the fan art and I'll just kind of have that revolving every five seconds. I'll figure out how to do it. I'll figure out how to do it. It won't take too long either. Uh, stove, not interested. We're pretty much done here, aren't we? All right. V good, V good, V good. We didn't find a single quest that allows us to do anything useful, which is very annoying. Oh. Oh, I thought that this headlight was uh, something we could turn on and off, but it's actually not. Uh, we probably need to, need to fill this car back up, so we'll go back to the MILFs aquifer, we'll refill our car right here. This is a heinous place to navigate. We've left a bunch of really, really annoying potholes all over the place, and it's not because we're mining either, it's because we're trying to flatten everything out to be less annoying, which has made it more annoying. Very funny. Okay. Uh, I'll come around here, I'll do a big sweep. Woo! I almost just flip the quad. Like my little sisters three Christmases ago. Oh, that's a fun little story. I have two families. I have two families. I have my mum's side of the family, 
which I have two half sisters on, and I've got my dad's side of the family where I don't have any siblings, I've just got a, a heap of cousins. And a couple of Christmases ago, basically uh, the plan was to spend the afternoon at my grandma's house with my dad's side of the family. And then I spent the night at mum's side of the family. And while I was at my my dad's side of the family, we were having our banquet, I got this I got this text from my mum's boyfriend saying, um, "Hey, uh, Vin, your sisters and uh, sister's boyfriend were in a in a car accident, um, and it was a nasty one. They're they're over at the emergency department now." And I spent like two hours panic trying to call my mum's boyfriend to get like. A little bit of a hint at what the hell was going on and uh, I finally get through to him on Facebook Messenger I think and he says oh no they were just riding around on a farm in a Polaris and they flipped it your sister's got a broken arm I, I literally thought someone died I literally thought that someone had died while I was at someone else's house and as it turned out that wasn't actually the case my mum's boyfriend just uh, I think it was having a laugh at my expense or maybe you just didn't know in the first place. Hard to tell sometimes. Uh, let's see how much core stone we have. We probably don't have 400 kilos of it. We got 200. Okay, so in about 20 minutes, we got half of what we needed. That's fine. That is, that is actually fine. We could probably maybe think about brush panning down there as well, but I don't think it's really going to speed anything up, to be quite honest. I think that we've probably got the best efficiency that we would want from this area here, especially with this heinous, heinous um, conveyor line. Look at all the resources. They just won't stop. Crazy amounts. Excellent, that's what I like to see. Got a giant lump of stone right there. Perfect. I love how it's all in the water as well. All of this electrical equipment is, is all just kind of like being powered by the sludge at the bottom of this map. It looks disgusting. Looks absolutely revolting. Okay, we should probably start dismantling uh, the conveyor system around there as well uh let's get the shovel to go up top side because we probably aren't going to be using it down here anymore anyway i lied actually we probably are going to be using it down here this is probably the best place to have it so let's go ahead run along the conveyor line we'll grab the shovel and then we'll just leave it down here huh? hopefully standing up on its end but i won't be too surprised if it falls over Wookie. So, all of these are hooked in. This is a really... Uh, like, uh, for the T2 machines, I think the issue with them is that they're so inefficient to hook up in sequence to each other. Because these here require anything to be hooked in from the side. The actual things. The machines that uh, spew out the dirt in the first place. The drills. So, if we had a line of these onto a conveyor belt feeding into a single grinder as we've got over at Ice Helm, we would probably have more of these uh, drills, but we still wouldn't be able to kind of space them out as efficiently as the Tier 3 machines. So it's a little bit of a shame that we have what we've got now. To be co completely honest, a little bit of a shame. All right, let's, let's go back to the agriculture. Maybe we can um, stick a bunch more T-pipes. Maybe we can set kind of like a, a logic system to enable and disable the valves. We'll go and see what's available at the logic store first before we do anything else. I think that might be a good idea. I'm trying to find a certain clip on of you, but I can't find it. What is the clip of? Because I have all of my recordings locally, and I'm pretty di uh, diligent about knowing what they are. Okay, tea break. Don't forget to hydrate like I usually do. Okay, so coming through. This one kind of slaps. This one kind of slaps. What's it called? Evangeline. I like it. It's good. Okay, so we want to go up to the logic circuitry store, which is just a hop, skip, and a jump up this hill right here next to this gigantic top hat that I've never noticed before. That is stupid decor. Like, overwhelmingly stupid decor. I suppose it'll keep your roof dry, but... Come on. It's so silly. Uh, let's see if there's anything that actually hooks into water pipes or, or something like that, because maybe there is actually going to be a way like this right here. Uh, actually, that's not helpful at all. A logic repeater that outputs a logic value of one every second is virtually useless to us because that's what our pipes are outputting. If there was maybe, like, something that allowed us to type in a time and then have it trigger after that, that'd be good. But I'm not really seeing a hell of a lot of stuff here that would work like that. Logic magnet. When switched on, pulls in objects within a two-block distance. That'd be kind of cool. Logic destroyer. Oh, this is a bin. 
Ah, okay, so we can actually get a bin. We can kind of like dump everything that's not necessarily Corestone or Cloudium out of the Milfs Aquifer without it kind of like choking up the belts, which chokes up the frame rate. It's also a Logic Smelter that's um, not helpful to us. Logic Gem Compressor. I actually find the Auto Smelters to be significantly easier to use than a Logic Smelter because you've got to be able to pipe things into this, don't you? I'm not sure you can just stick it in the top. Probably can, but I don't know. Uh, logic Reader. Displays Logic Pass through the hook cable. Logic Light produces light. Oh, that's kind of cool. Logic Delay, one second. Right, we need better ones. Logic Delay, 10 seconds. Delays Logic passing by 10 seconds. That one would be ideal to stick on. Actually, a flip hook would be pretty nice as well. Turns an incoming Logic value into a one, then zero, then one, then zero, then one, and so on. That might not be useful to us. Logic Validator, only lets a Logic value pass if it's one or greater. So if we get a logic delay and we stick it on the logic timer, no, I don't know if that's going to create a feedback loop, actually, because we want to be able to turn this thing off as well. So this one would uh, create an incoming logic of zero into one and then back into zero. So that just flicks something, which would turn off the sprinkler system if we had an object that interacted with it. But I don't necessarily... Oh, yeah, logic valve hook. So this, it would plug into this one, right? G and B. <laughs> that music. Whoa, no. Okay, uh, 85 bucks for stops the passing of water or logic. So if we had a logic flip flop, like that, no, not that one. Logic flip hook, this one right here. If we had this valve hook plugged into the logic flip hook with a delay of 10 seconds and then just a lever on the other side that turns it on, maybe we'd also need a timer. Hard to say, actually. We could probably actually automate the the farm a little bit better than we have right now. Let's go back to the farm, because we still have a little bit of time to burn. Probably got another, like, 15 seconds or so. It's when you said I fancy this little girl. Okay, okay. I'm glad you can't find that, because there's only one reason somebody would want that clip. And it's, it's not good. It's not a good thing. Taken out of context, of course. Thank you, YouTube. Uh, we're going to go back over here. We're going to go get the cart. We're going to stick some logic stuff on it. And we're going to see if we can't maybe automate the the hooks that are coming in and out of the ocean. We probably shouldn't be watering our crops with ocean water. It's probably a really bad idea. But, you know, on one hand, we don't have a, an option. And on the other hand, I don't particularly care. We are still getting crops from it, which is very silly. All right, what have we got? But it's still growing. It's very dark. Uh, if there's a bed, we'll sleep. There is a bed. Let's go teabag ourselves. Whoop. There we go. Nice. Never mind. I found it. Bugger. I'm sorry to hear that, Red Rocks. Okay. Uh, here's the cart. It does have some money in it. Let's go ahead and take this bad boy. It's a fast one, too, so we can just run this straight into town. We don't even have to try and sprint or anything like that because it's fast. And we'll see if we can't get that logic flip-flop because I'm pretty sure frames are dipping from all of those pipes dropping liquid once every second. We want to crash the game through ore generation. We don't want to crash the game through agriculture. That that would suck. That would be a really, really bad thing. I'm getting frame drip uh, pulling this cart around, though, which is a little bit strange. Okay, good. Down here, we're pretty close to the logic store. It's literally right ahead of us here. I see the neon green through the trees. Good thing green is such a recognizable color. Never mind, it was up here. I was looking at the wrong green. Whoopsies. Okay, Hobson's power works. So we want a couple. I'm going to get a lever regardless of whether or not we need it as well. So let's go ahead and get a logic repeater. We'll get a lever so we can turn this entire system on or off. I'm not interested in these splitters or math. I'm bad at math when it comes to these kinds of games. Go ahead, put that there. Which one of these do we need? Logic content reader. That's not useful. Oh, reads the liquid content of smelters. No, that is useless, actually. Logic weight reader, also useless. Okay, let's come over here. There's nothing there we would possibly want for. Over here, so we want a logic flip hook. Good. And we're also going to want a logic delay of 10 seconds. And we're also going to need a logic valve hook. So, we're going to need a T-pipe as well as maybe... So we've got two hooks on here. We're probably going to need a logic T and then two straights. That should just be enough. That that should be all we need, honestly. Yeah, it should be everything. I'm also going to get an elbow in case we need it, but I don't think we'll need it. And if we really don't need it, I'll just leave it in the ocean. Excellent. 
Okay, I lied. I just wanted to see your reaction. Huh? Uh, we need the money in the bucket right here. Just say something else like, I love labias or something like that. Okay, uh, Red Rux, I'll say that. I'll say that. I'll, sa I'll say that. There's not really anything wrong with labias, though. Quite frankly. I've seen Georgia O'Keeffe's artwork. She glamorizes them so that they don't uh, have a bad reputation. Pretty noble. Pretty noble work she's done, honestly. Man, she can make anything look like a labia. <laughs> right, let's come over here. We'll just cut through this housing store. I bet whoever owns that housing store is getting really pissed off of, of us jumping on her thatch roofs with like half a ton of stuff in our pockets. Good. Come over here. That volcano on the horizon looks really cool. Honestly, that is such a great way of advertising a DLC. Like, hey, see that mountain? You can go there. There's like a FromSoft way of advertising. Okay, now that we're here, we probably want to set up all of this infrastructure really, really close to the water, don't we? Because we aren't too interested in congesting whatever's up there. Uh, I'm removing this. That can go right there. And we want the logic hook, which is right here. This is going to go not upside down, but like that. Perfect. And I want the elbow. I knew I got the elbow for a good reason. Let's go ahead, flip it over. Put that right there. Actually, it's got to be a little bit taller, doesn't it? Maybe we just cantilever it out into the ocean. That might be a good idea as well. Okay. Get this uh, logic repeater over here. We'll get this here lever in case we actually need power. Oops. Okay, everything is wet. That's probably not good for it, but, you know, watch me here. Uh, let's go ahead and shove this straight logic cable right here. And we'll put the switch on that after we kind of hook in all of these. Like that one there, and this one as well. It needs to be kind of like here, I think. And the... Uh, let's go ahead and try and stick this around like here. I No, let's put the lever... No, that is, that's the metronome. So we'll put that one right there. Oh, cool. That's not good. All right, let's uh, pull that off. We actually need to stick the flip-flop on there first, I think. Yeah, good. So let's go ahead and stick this last in the chain. We'll put this back there. That's the lever. Whoops. Uh, we'll put that there. And now will this work? It just turned it off. Is it going to turn it back on again every 10 seconds? Oh, we need the actual delay, don't we? Uh, let's take this and stick it on there sideways so we can read it. And we'll put this here lever on right there so that we can actually s see and use it too. I don't even know what that is. Uh, okay, light bulb, sure. Boom. Is it on or off? Okay, let's turn that on. So that's everything dripping. So in 10 seconds, that should shut off, right? Hopefully. I think this is going to do uh, exactly what... We, yeah, so that's shut off. 10 seconds later. Oh, the frame rate's all back now, too. Awesome. Okay, so if we keep on watching this, 10 seconds later, it should go back on. It should have just flicked it on and off. I don't know why it's... It's actively avoiding doing that. Okay, it doesn't turn back on, which is very annoying, even after 10 seconds. And this thing here is supposed to flick it on and off, not just on once. So if we turn that... What the hell? Seriously? All right. So that's the water dropping. We've got everything correctly in the chain. That's off. Now, 10 seconds later, it should go on. Regardless of whether or not this works, by the way, we will have access to the Prospecting Guild tokens in just a hot minute. Yeah, no, I don't think it's working somehow. Maybe we aren't understanding the automation chain that we have here properly. So let's get this thing off. And now... Oh, that belongs to the sea now. <laughs> don't worry, I'll go back and get it. Uh, I'll put this on here, like, sideways, I think, so it doesn't roll into the ocean. Let's just use the old one, I suppose. Put that there. That's open. Excellent. 
All right, that'll just do what it does. Let's uh, get back on our quad if it's still here. Is it still here? It might not still be here. No, it's definitely not still here. Okie dokie. Uh, we're going to go all the way back to the farming town because I seem to remember that was where we left everything. And then we are going to get all of the core stone from the millsack with it. It should be enough to finish off this quest. Because we only needed iron and gold, which we're getting massive amounts of down in the dungeon. Which is Ice Helm. That's what we're calling Ice Helm. And I think the core stone is probably coming at a consistent rate about now. It has been about 20 minutes since we last checked. And we'd had the machine on for about 20 minutes. We had half of it, almost exactly half of what we needed. So by my math, it should be good. Should be good to go. Where the hell did we leave the quad? <laughs> did we walk to the garden? Uh, we probably left it in Milf's sack with her, to be quite honest. Okay. So we'll come through here. I'll run through the trees like some kind of creepy Slender Man figure of some sorts. Uh, we'll try and jump scare an NPC on our way over too if there are any uh, in the forest here kind of minding their own business. I don't know, like trying to smell their own feet without the, um, the prying eyes of the public. Dude, where's my car? It's gone. Okay, that's embarrassing. It could actually be up at the dungeon, to be honest. All right, let's open this. And how much is this? This is 357 kilos. That's almost what we need. We need 400. So that's a little bit depressing, actually. Oh, we would have had so much because the machines were still actively running, weren't they? We still had the machines down here actually pumping stuff out while the uh, conveyor belt was done. So we're probably another, like, five minutes away, I would say. Five minutes away was, is probably going to be a, an adequate estimation. This is pretty effective as well. I don't know if we could do this any more efficiently than we are. DJ, hello, am I late? No, absolutely not. You are not late. Uh, we are probably going to be polishing off Hydrogenia in the session. Well, at least the vanilla base game stuff. Oops, fell down. Got to unstuck myself. I think that uh, this may be the last episode, if not like the second last episode, before we move on to the DLC area and we start taking a look at the lava and the, the ice water piping systems. If we go back up, I don't think we're going to find anything new. We're probably still not pumping out core stone, which is a, a real shame. But maybe we can kind of like clear it out with nukes while we wait, right? Because we, we still have nukes. We still have nukes. We still have lots of money and they still do function as we want them to. So let's go ahead and try that. Just while we wait. Lit off a couple of nicks. How did you beat this? Uh, we've gotten to the best area in the game, Ice Helm. It's right next to where you craft all the machines. And we are also kind of very, very close to getting all of the end game machinery set up down in Ice Helm. Which should be pumping out resources at an alarming rate once we actually get it all up and running. Uh, we want to go down here. And then we're going to look this way so that we can go all the way over here. Uh, we need to make this though. We need 400 core stone, uh, 400 kilo core stone bar, 1,000 gold bar, and 5,000 iron bar. I suppose that it could be in like milligrams, 400 milligrams, 1,000 milligrams. So that would equal like a kilo. And then five, uh, five kilos of iron bar. That's probably actually what a sword weighs as well. Oh, there's gold right here. Weird. All right, let's stick that in there. I'm pretty sure we've got lots and lots of clousium. Uh, we can't do anything with the sword, unfortunately. I don't know if we can melt this down. In fact, actually, let's just really quickly check the internet for whether or not we can actually just melt this thing down. Because we may be able to. Hydronia, melt sword. Simple swords? Uh, no, you can't do it. It's literally undoable. All right, so this is a worthless sword. We'll actually we should probably just go and sell this, right? Because it's just taking up space at this point. Almost done. That's cool. Uh, you, stick, you stick whatever you make in the fan art section of the Discord. Or if there's a better way of doing it, like Imgur or something like that, you choose that way. Whatever you choose. Whatever you choose there, Spray Paints. Uh, I'm going to sell this. I'm going to sell the sword because we can't really do anything else. I wonder what this fella's is doing up here. It's just kind of like... Looking over the, the ledge... Are you brooding, sir? Are you there? Hey! Hey, yeah, don't sound like you're brooding. What are you looking at? What the hell is that? Oh, I've never seen that before. What is this? I'm going down there. I'm gonna go explore. Hello, dwarves! I left a sword at the door. Is there any way we can kind of like see through the map or something? No. Doesn't seem to be. Alright, I tried. 
Uh, I'm going to go all the way over here. we got to climb all the way back up, and then I'm just going to sell the sword at the nearest shop. It's worthless to us. It's literally worthless to us. It's absolute crappy garbage. We'll do that later. I did say I was going to detonate a few nukes. Let's do that. Let's detonate some nukes. Maybe we can get the machines that we do have set up. Pump our core stone. Uh, before we need it on the other end of what we're doing. Okay, I'm going to stick it kind of like here. And I'm going to recess it into the wall as well as I can. That's not going to touch our machinery. Perfect. Let's go ahead and blow that bad boy with a button. Got a button over here. We've actually got two. No, we've got just enough nukes and buttons. Excellent. Honestly, this mine is probably a powder keg. Just waiting to go off. The way we've set it out is probably very dangerous. Uh, how do we want to do this? Probably like that sideways. And then we just want to kind of like three, two, one, detonate. All right, I can't see anything. Uh, my head is shaking and I am blind. Where are we? We did actually make a pretty good hole in the wall right here. I think all of this is T2 stuff as well. So we could probably just mine all of that out and curve into the back of the room over here. Let's go ahead and get another nuke and see just how far back we can actually get all this stuff. Oops, didn't mean to fall over there. Uh, we're probably gonna need a lot of conveyors as well if we're gonna be doing it this way. Go ahead, grab this nuke right here. Then we'll blow our way into the back. Uh, this is the only way of getting through T3 soil that I know of, by the way. If you don't have a T3 pickaxe, then this is just the best. Just the best way. I don't really think we want it as low as possible either. Because that's what the wiki said, right? We, we don't need it really, really low. We just kind of, like, need it to be really far back. Which is just fine by me. That means we can probably actually move the sorting system in a way so that we're not blocking off that exit there with uh, all of these pipes too. Which may be a future problem, but it is a problem nonetheless. Let's go ahead, grab one of these buttons, and we'll go all the way back over here. I'm actually going to take this mezzanine floor, and we're just going to go over all of the crap that gets in the way so we don't have to parkour. All right, we'll put this button on here. Three, two, one, detonate! Boom! Ow, my ears. Sweet Jesus, my ears. My poor, poor virgin ears. Wow, you got to really kind of curve this around the back, right? Okay, mushroom cloud's probably going to be peeking up uh, over the topsoil. It looks like this is probably as far back as it'll go. So we probably just want to expand this out here. We'll get the pickaxe. We'll get the pickaxe and we'll just kind of make a little bit of a thoroughfare so that we can kind of go through. We'll set up some more conveyor systems further into the mine and I'm pretty sure that is going to serve us just perfect, fine and dandy. Go ahead, bust all this out of the way. Uh, we can kind of also curve everything that we have here around the side so that we can uh, kind of lead into the workshop area that we've also kind of set up for ourselves rather than the sorting system being the uh, first point of call. All right, good. Just going to mine all of that crap out. Nice. Anything else? Oh, yeah, there's a couple of little dudes and dots. Uh, we can't mine through that. We can only mine through this. So this is pretty far back, actually. I don't know if we want to go... All right, this seems to be the edge. Yep, that is the edge. Let's go ahead and try and mine into this. Maybe we can detonate another nuke into here and we'll have some better access further into the mine. Might be a really good idea. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and blow all this out. I'm just going to do a walkway. I'm not, I'm not going to mine out the whole thing just yet. We just kind of want to make it about yay deep so that we can kind of get some machinery in here if we need to do so. Going to go up onto these. Now we're going to go up these stairs right here. We'll go all the way around. What are we getting? Nuke! We're getting a nuke. The last nuke of the lot. Which is good because now we don't have any nukes in our sm smelting workshop. Which is just a hazard waiting to happen, to be quite honest. I'm surprised we still have this entire mine. We could have blown ourselves up several times. Alright, I'll stick this one fairly deep into here. Recess it to about... There, and we'll put the button beneath it. And we'll detonate it from below. Manually, by hand. Because that's how nukes work. That's just how nukes work. Go ahead, grab this button right here. Nice. Then, guys, let's go ahead and go up here so we don't have to get stuck on all the machinery as we go down. Excellent. And we want to put this just under, don't we? Go on, flip upside down. There we go, perfect. Uh, we also want to be able to see the bloody button too which we can't. Go ahead, drop that on the ground. We'll turn this around so we can actually see where the nuke is pointing. Yep, that looks fine to me. Let's go ahead, put this one 
around there. Good, and we can access the button. Three, two, one, detonate! Okay, I don't know how far into the mine we are or where we are or uh, what's going on, but we did it nonetheless. We also kept our pickaxe, which is very cash money. Let's actually go ahead and just start mining all of this out. Oh, we got pretty far into it, actually. Nice, awesome. Uh, so what I want to do is basically set up a line recessing into here. Oh no, there's more dirt to blow out as well. Booze! We're probably gonna have to do that quest. Get the T3 pickaxe. What the hell is going on in here? Oh, thank the Lord. I thought that was permanent for a second there. I was about to have a conniption and, and do some yelling. Ooh, can you give, a, give us a thumbs up and a big smile? What is this, Fallout um, TV series? No, you're, you're gonna take me and you're gonna make me look like a criminal. I, I don't want that. That is really bad PR. I can already sense what you're doing. I can sense it. Okay, let's go ahead and mine all of this out. Besides, if you want thumbs up, you're not gonna get it from me. Yeah, this world is a dark place and I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna lie to anybody about that with my thumbs. Uh, mine out here. Ah, perfect. So this is... Basically, this line into here is where we kind of want to start setting up all of our machinery. Actually, not amazing, is it? Probably do just want to get the T3 pickaxe. Okay, how long did that take us? About 10 minutes to do. We took 10 minutes just blowing nukes in the mine, which was fun. It was fun to do, and I'm happy to do so. Let's take the sword out. We're going to go sell it, and then we are going to... What are we going to do? We're going to get all of the core stone from the Mills Aquifer because by that point, we should have enough to do this quest. It's a shame that we didn't quite get the quest on this sword. It's a shame that all of the parts need to be in the right place. But it is what it is. I imagine some people quite like their swords with uh, aluminium handle grips or maybe even wooden handle grips with a, a big, I don't know, uh, what is it? Hardened, no, it's not hardened steel. What are actual tournament swords made of? It's not 440 stainless. That stuff's crap. You want a, a much higher grain than that. Well, whatever it is, you probably don't want the actual blade to be made out of wood and the handle itself to be made out of steel because that'll just shock your hands every time you knock it against something. Probably won't break, though, too much, unless somebody sharpened their swords. Okay, we're ascending. I've got the sword in my hand. I don't know how much it's going to give us in terms of money. The sword's really invasive on the screen, actually. I thought we were being stabbed from behind. Every time we look uh, downwards from this. Uh, let's put it in the back lofty and we will gap it out of this hell hole, which doesn't pump our core stone. Maybe we'll go down to Milf's Aquifer and we'll see if we can't... No, we definitely have to craft the sword first. So we'll do the Milf's Aquifer after we sell the first sword that we crafted. We'll see how much money we have. It's probably going to be quite expensive. I think we did value it last time. It was around about 200k, which is significantly less than just us selling a bucket's worth of gold, unfortunately. So the core stone... It's not valuable. It's, it's really not valuable whatsoever, and I don't think the iron's very valuable either. I'm gonna hit this guy with my car. And he's gone. I deleted him from the world. No, he's not, he's in the river. That will suck to be him. Enjoy your trench foot. Uh, let's go ahead, get out of here. We'll grab the sword. Nice. And we'll sell it to this jeweler. You know, Under 91,000 bucks. The best resources. Yeah, but it's, it's the least expensive resources. Here you go, Here, here's a really inefficient sword. 200 grand. I don't really think it was worth it, to be quite honest. <laughs> uh, we got a lot of money in the back of this car, actually. I'm going to hit this guy again. I think he escaped from the uh, from the river. All right, let's go ahead and hit that guy too. And we'll come over here. We'll see whether or not we have access to enough core stone, which we need. Hey, this guy's got a quest for us. What's up, buddy? What do you need? Watch out for the car. You reckon you could get this for me? 149 prospecting tokens? That's nowhere near enough. Piss off. I'm going to run her down. Excuse me. <laughs> I know we can't really afford to be picky if we don't have any uh, prospecting co tokens whatsoever, but we can just do the guards quest, which will give us 20 grand in a different currency than we already have. Uh, uh, basically min-maxed. How heavy is this? This is 500 kilos. That's exactly what we need. Great. Let's go ahead and stick this in the back of the car. And before we go and do something, I'm going to go ahead and change this album because Highly Suspect has better albums than this one, got to be said. There are a couple of good songs on, uh, what is it called? The Midnight Demon. The Midnight Demon Club. That's the one. That's what we're listening to. I'm changing it to Mr. Asylum, which I know is just God tier. Yeah, that's nice. 
Great. Uh, we'll hop into Lofty, of course, after we uh, teabag ourselves in bed. I'm stuck in the back of the ute. That sucks. Let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of a cheeky teabag. We missed it. We almost got it. We almost got the teabag, but we didn't quite land the clutch. Excellent. So, let's get in the back of this ute, and we are done with this place. Completely done with this place. Actually, since we are done with this place, we might want to turn it off because it's uh, a bit of a frame rate killer. So let's go and jump into Satan's suck hole down here. Boing! Here we are. And we want to hit this right here. Done. And we also want to turn this one off as well. Right here. Good. Okay, perfect. Now, I'm not entirely sure if those water filters are going to continue taking damage, but I don't particularly give two hoots. <laughs> gotta be said. Sorry, I got a moustache here up my nose. Let's go ahead and come into the van. And I think we're going to ignore the road, and we're going to go uh, kind of like sideways up this hill right here. I'm done with it? Awesome! I can't wait to see it. I don't know how you're going to show me, though. Imgur is really good. If you get an Imgur account, you can start posting photos on there. I'm actually, I actually... I do really love Imgur. My my Yinset and my best friend Carl, those two, really, really like Instagram's reels. That's what they scroll on whenever they want to doom scroll. Wow, we got a lot of money here. Uh, I should probably be using YouTube shorts, but whenever I want to just see memes, I'll go onto Imgur and I'll look up meme dumps because there are so many of them. There are some people that consistently post like meme dumps of 50 memes every single day and they're curated too. Like Imgur actually has a really, really cool community. I do like them. Uh, core stone, that's what we need. Let's go ahead and dump this into the beast's mouth. And it's gone forever. Great. We fed the beast. That is the link to my, we'll be right back meme video. Video? Oh, it's gonna be really, really hard to play a video over and over again, my dude. Uh, coming down here, we wanna jump off of here, don't we? And we wanna break our ankles landing on this bridge. Excellent, here's our bar. Now, we need a couple of other things as well. We probably don't want to waste all of this core stone, but once we start getting these machines pumping out, we are going to have so many resources. So I think an extra 100 core stone bar doesn't really matter. All right, so the first one needs to be core stone, the second one needs to be gold, and the third one needs to be iron. We probably don't really care about iron or gold anymore, so we can probably just use these ingots, however heavy they are. So that's going to be second. Iron has to be third, right here. So we're going to heat all of these up right here. I'm going to try and kind of like order them in the order that they should be in as we stick them in. And where's that course number? Right here. Uh, we want to drop this one in because that's going to be the first one for the sword. And we'll wait a bit for that to just get up. I won't bombard you with videos. Just made this video for you. Watch it over when you're on a break on the stream or later. Yeah, I'll take a look at it. I'll definitely take a look at it. If you upload it anywhere uh, and you tag me in it, I'll definitely take a look at it. That's just a general rule that I have. It's a good rule. I don't know if this is actually hitting it up. I know that the gold and the iron are both really, really hot right now. I don't think the core stone is heating up too much. Maybe if we just kind of like drop that one there or something. Oh, that's a horrible place to put that. How about that? Core stone? Is that going? Is it cooking? I don't know if it's cooking. I know the gold's definitely cooking. Okay, I'll move this over here then. This one can have all of the space in the world because for some reason it won't heat up. There you go, buddy. Maybe it just is heated up already. Or just don't watch it. No, no, if someone tags me in a video, I'll watch it. Unless it's like hours long, in which case I, I simply don't have the time to kind of uh, cater to those needs. But when people make fan art, I look at it. I always look at it. And I'll always respond to it as well, because that's the least I can do. If someone's taking time to make something for me, the least I can do is respond to that person. Okay, so... It would actually be really handy to have that pin board right there, but I think we need more prospecting tokens before we get it. Four stones first. Four stone is on the one. Gold second. Iron third. Okay. Four stone, gold, iron. Four stone, right here, on the one. Gold... That's the gold, yes, on the two. Iron, right here, on the third. And now we make the sword. Mm. Boom. Mm. Okay, for some reason this core stone isn't actually heating up. Weird. Really weird. Maybe I have to, like, cut it in half and then smelt it together again. Or maybe it's, it's just the bar that's not really working too well. This will heat it up fast. Yes, I knew it. 
It wasn't heating up whatsoever. I'll drop that in there. These were already cooling down a little bit too much. So let's go ahead and just replace them into this little furnace we've got. We probably want to get a couple more furnaces, honestly. If it does take this long to heat things up, we probably want to get a couple more furnaces. Okay. So, we'll take a look at this again. Four stone, gold, iron. Four stone, gold, iron. If we screw this up, we're going to have to wait another billion years for the uh, the core stone to generate. Four stone, gold, iron. Four stone, gold, iron. Four stone. First, gold. Second, iron. Third, I'm being real fast about this too because I don't know how long we have until the core stone cools down. Oh, for God's sake. Seriously? Come on. Oh, have we... Maybe we haven't, like, um... Oh, we didn't actually have anything here. So we got the sword. I'll put the core stone back on here. That should be right. This should be perfect. Boom! This is the right sword. Why do they want a core stone pommel? You don't want really, really... Okay, so when you're making swords, by the way, because I've handled a few swords in my time, you don't want a super, super rigid uh, handle. You don't want that whatsoever. And you definitely don't want the hilt to be super rigid either. Because if they... If either one, get the pommel or the, ha the hilt gets struck, then you'll get massive amounts of uh, reverberation through your hand, which usually would cause you to drop the sword. However, you do also want the blade to be... I personally prefer one side to be really, really strong and the other side to be uh, kind of like quite malleable. So I quite like... Um, I don't know what people call them in, in most things, but when I have a hand and a half or a two-handed sword, I prefer to have uh, something called a cleaver, which is where one side has a, a bevel on it, so it's not terribly sharp, and the other side is sharp. Because I'm always going to be striking with a, the, the sharp side of the sword, and I'm going to be defending with the bevel, simply because that's just how I kind of throw my weight around when I have a sword. Also, I've done sword fighting. It's really fun. I'm not going to like Epe, Rapier, or Saber. Saber's okay. I'm okay with, but uh, not the kind of like foil fencing styles, but... Uh, the other fencing styles, I'm... I'm a huge fan of, and I'm not German either. I don't like the German long school, longsword schools. I'm more of a Fior de uh, Triates of Hema kind of guy. That stuff is so fun. It's so fun, Italian sword fighting. It's got a finesse that really does translate well to the modern world. Whereas a lot of people are just all like, oh, if you don't learn German, you're just stupid. <laughs> it's that kind of arrogance that put me off the German sword fighting in the first place. Okay, we got the sword. Uh, we need to go all the way back to the keep. Sorry, I could talk about long swords all day, every day. Because they're fun. They're really, really fun. Let's go over here, because I see the bridge, and I don't want to crash the car. I was about to say I don't want to crash the car, and then crash the car, but unfortunately I I landed it, so you didn't get to see that content whatsoever. That's cut content. It doesn't exist. Oh, I'm swerving all over the place. My god, could you guys imagine if, like, your Amazon courier... You could see your Amazon courier coming from a couple of blocks away and they swerve around every single corner at maximum speed, just riding two wheels. That'd be so funny. I got your package! I'm coming! I'm coming! Leave a good review! <laughs> That'd be so good. I'd probably even hire people based on that. Frisk kind of looks like Dora from the kids' show. Can you say genocide? Can you say genocide? What was your favorite part? That was my favorite kill too. Yes! Sanya. Yes! Unlimited money! We also just got an achievement for that as well, for accumulating 10,000 Prospect Guild tokens. We also doubled the requirement of that achievement, just by getting this. Awesome! So we're going to go all the way back to the Prospecting Guild, which is in town, and we're going to buy ourselves some intake pipes, we're going to get ourselves a Tier 3 pickaxe, and then we're going to set up every... Oh, piss, I'm not driving this car very well at all. Then we're going to get everything in Ice Helm fully set up. We may even be able to get a few more machines by the end of this session as well. Excuse me, sir. I need to get somewhere uh, faster than you need to kind of meander around the place. All right, through here. And I'm not going to take that bridge, of course. I'm going to cut straight across the river because I am an absolute philistine. Let's, let's jump this hill in Lofty. Or we could just kind of like go over it like, a, like we'll ooze over the hill. It's not satisfying, but it does function. Money, money, money! Yeah, we got money. We got so much money now. Uh, this is the end game money as well. We basically automated money, I don't know, like 10, 15 hours ago. A few hours into the game, essentially. M money just came too fast. 
And now we have automated the prospecting guild so we can just uh, basically focus on getting a billion machines set up. Which is why I keep saying that the DLC is going to be our next challenge. Okay. Let's put this in the bucket, see how much we have all together. We have 18,258. Okay, let's get two of these intake pipes right here because they are so good. We're probably going to want to just get a bunch of these pipes as well, these horsestone pipes. But we're going to get them later. We're not going to get them right now. We're going to get a full set of T3 tools, of course. T3 pickaxe, T3 shovel right here. We'll put this right there as well. Uh, whoops, I just hit my head on the door. That's embarrassing. And this one as well. And I'm also, don't worry everybody, I'm going to get this here mining helmet too. Because I'm pretty sure it's going to cast light in front of us. Okay, 5,000 bucks. That is chump change for us right now. I'm going to leave all this money here too because there's not anywhere else where we can kind of use it. All right, what does this do? What does this do? I thought it projects light. There's no light coming out of it. What do you mean it shows you ore veins? What the hell does that even mean? Oh, well, I'm sure we'll figure it out later. Let's get Lofty over here so that we don't have to individually huck all these things into the back of the game. I love grinding money in games. It's so fun. It's super fun at the start of hard games. Yeah, I love doing it in this game as well, but I did do it maybe five times <laughs> because we got that really, really nasty save uh, bug three times in a row. And then I kind of um, also recorded a tutorial on how to fix that. And then we then we fired into the actual game itself, the game proper. Uh, we got to go backwards so that I spawn in the boot or not. Okay, we'll just go around here. Go ahead, pick up all of these tools and we'll huck them onto the back of the car. Can't reach. That's fine. This one can go here. This rake as well. Rakes are really cool. I didn't realize how cool they were until I kind of uh -huh. used one for the first time. Uh -huh. It's basically, uh -huh. it's it's what turns the game into Minecraft. All right, let's get both of these intake pipes. We'll come back for the other pipes. We've still got 12 grand, but we're probably not going to get a lot of ground. We're, we're not going to be able to cover uh, uh, too much, to be quite honest, unless we exclusively pipe in the machines with the core stone pipes because they do increase pressure. No, they reduce the water pressure drop from the source. But we can also kind of mitigate that with a gigantic bar of electricity as well. So it's not terribly important to us. Whew. It's like I suck at this game, but I have the power of money. Yeah, it's so nice, isn't it? I'm definitely one of those guys that really likes early game in a lot of games because it gives you the the beer goggles. No, honeymoon phase. Uh, they're basically both the same thing. One One's just uh, for love. The other one's for drunkenness. It basically gives you kind of like an intoxicating love for seeing the mechanic for the first time, right? For the first time in the game, where it's just kind of like harder. So you're always rewarded for whatever work you put in. Uh, let's actually back this into the uh, little beast's mouth so that we can just take these straight out of the back of the ute and we should be fine. What? Let's go ahead and do this helmet first because I don't know what it does. Put that down there. This stone pipe can go down there as well. This pipe can go in there of course probably should have brought some kind of i don't know cart to lug it all into but yeah i always find when you wait seriously you can't put tools on this thing that sucks what a stupid design flaw all right fine uh we'll go and we'll get a cart and then we'll bring it up top because we don't really have a choice in this in this instance. But yeah, I, I really like the early game crafting and stuff. Once you, it, the game kind of establishes, hey, you've actually seen all there is to see, and this is in fact the core gameplay loop, it kind of, I feel like it robs the game of a lot of the charm that it could possibly have. Like, there aren't many games that throw a spanner in the works of the crafting systems, and they, they change the crafting mechanics like halfway through the game, which keeps games fresh, right? The games basically just establish a crafting system, and that is this crafting system that you will be using for the next potentially thousand hours of the gameplay itself. Which is a bit of a letdown. I feel like if... Honestly, when it comes to video games, I don't understand why developers double down on a single mechanic, right? Like, we bought our first couple of machines, and then every single other machine that you get in this game, you craft at this gigantic anvil here. So, by definition... This is the best place to be setting up your base because much like every single other patch of land except for Ember's Cradle, the depth is 22 blocks. So you can always get to the max depth, depth as long as you're not at the starting location. But at this place, it's got the shortest distance from all the machines. So if you're crafting lots of machines at once, it just makes the most sense to kind of set up base where you're crafting those machines. So that's an established mechanic. 
is getting to Iceholm as fast as possible because every single other place is guaranteed going to have more travel time, which is less efficiency. It's also cool and it's in work games or grinding games. Yeah, I definitely agree. But I don't understand, right? I don't understand why developers don't take the mechanics, the established mechanics, and then they change it up a little bit, right? There's nothing like that. Like, if there was a crafting mechanic in this game where, like, for early game stuff, you have to kind of, you know, just put everything on the anvil and smack it around, which is fine. It's lazy, but it's fine. It works. It works, but it's not elegant. But what if halfway through there was kind of, like, the ability to get better anvils and then you can, like, sharpen the weapons or balance them better? And it would take literally no time to implement. You just literally have the item hovering, get a grindstone, use it, just grind it against the blade or um, temper the steel by dropping it in an oil bucket or something. And that increases the value by like a, a flat 5% or something like that. Because it's quick. It's a, it's a real quick thing. Got one more tool up top side that we need to go and get. I don't understand why developers just don't implement further... I don't want to say busy work. But it is kind of busy, optional busy work. Like, uh, the ability to hone in the crafting system that by that point you've probably already mastered, right? Like, it took us two times crafting a sword before we literally mastered all crafting in the game. Once we figured out that we had to do them in a specific order, after their guard just kind of didn't tell us anything, we had figured out every single crafting mechanic in the game. And it only took 30 seconds as well. It took 30 seconds of trial and error and one incorrect item. That's what it took. That is a nice idea. It's always nice for a change of games. Yeah, absolutely. But like, not just like flat out change the mechanic. I, that would be annoying. But to have the mechanic and then progressively, as the tiers go on, add things onto the mechanics that would either increase the value of the item that you're crafting or increase kind of like the efficiency at which speed happens because time gates are a huge thing in crafting games as well. Like an arc. If Ark Survival Evolved replaced their time gates with just a crank on the side of something and you just stand at the crank and you crank it and that speeds up the time gate, that would be such a, it's such an easier game. Well, not easier because you're still dedicating the time that you could be spending hunting and gathering resources to speeding up the creation of the resources. But so much of Ark Survival Evolved and Conan Exiles and a lot of other games like that that just have artificial uh, time gates, you could definitely do with just having a single craftable item right that just works in a radius of something just uh, not a big radius so as long as you place it next to a device that is forcing you to engage in an artificial time gate just allow it to speed up i don't know why developers don't put this in their heads it makes no sense to me why people don't do this all right we got all of our t3 tools down here that's nice to look at uh just really quickly have to do a snuff Okay, that's significantly better. Is the mic on? Good. Yes, I hope I didn't just cough right into the microphone. I'm still writing the end of this cold. I've got a bunch of dead cells in me. By the way, when you are, like, coughing up green and yellow stuff when you're six, uh, that, that's your immune system working, by the way. If anybody thinks that it's, like, when you're most infectious, that's not true whatsoever. Your most infectious is where you're kind of, like, leaking crystal clear liquids. That's not good. That's infectious. Uh, the best time is, is basically after that, and uh, your body is basically winning the war and needs to kill the cells that have already latched onto the cells that are being infected so um when something is colored it means it's dead unless it's red in which case that's blood and that's not good to be coughing up in any way sick or not i'm gonna see if there's anything in the back of the ute that we kind of left up there just really quickly before we get to mining out the back of of the dungeon and we should be pretty much golden yeah, I studied um, a Bachelor's of IT here at our local Polytech here in Dunedin, New Zealand for about a year and a half before I had to drop out due to my health complications. My, the brain damage that I had when I was a teenager from the meningitis got, got the better of me and I had to uh, kind of find other ways. We've also got everything, so we can now start work on the mine. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to do the second half of the Bachelor's of IT, a three-year qualification, simply because... The second half of it was the part where we're not, like, learning cryptography and uh, learning four different programming languages at once and learning a bunch of other uh, crap that I would probably not necessarily say would have been relevant to me whatsoever in terms of my potential IT career. What I wanted to do was make video games, and that was a uh, year's worth of that course right at the end of it. So I it dropped out at just the most inopportune time, but... 
to go back there, I'd have to relearn everything because tech just advances so fast, and I'll have to relearn a bunch of different languages. Like, um, when I was learning, we had to learn JavaScript and a little bit of Java to complement the JavaScript itself, and uh, C Sharp, C++. There was also a bit of Python, HTML5, uh, and some Markdown. We needed to know all of that just to be able to finish essentially the first year and a half. And when it got to the point where I had to learn the third language, third and fourth language, which was Java and JavaScript, uh, my brain was just all like, man, you've you've been overworking yourself. I'm going to give you a mental breakdown now. Good luck. And so I dropped out. But I really wanted to make video games because I've got all of these ideas in my head about how to make really, really good video games. And now I just don't have the qualification. All I can do is kind of like, you'd have to trust me, bro, kind of kind of stuff, right? All right, let's take this off and we'll put this uh, core stone outtake pipe right there. See what that does. That should speed literally everything up to an alarming rate. Oh, that has speed everything up. I can actually see just how fast it is. Nice. You're just stopping by to say hi, because I saw you were streaming. I've got to go right after I say hi. So hi, Jensen. Hey there, teardrop. Oh my god, you, I've finished. Nice. What is your idea for video games? I am currently making one right now. Well, I say making. I'm kind of relying on uh, one of my friends who uh, fortunately just moved in with a, uh, me and my friends last week. So we'll be able to do this a lot more effectively than we have been. She's an artist. I'm a crap artist. That's the only thing I'm not able to do. Uh, I am, however, a very talented writer, and I'm really, really good at kind of, like, finding really strange, unique ways of implementing common mechanics. Like the crafting system I just told you about. It's so, so easy to make additions to a crafting system after you already have the base crafting system. So to just, like, sharpen a sword or drop in oil to kind of, like, quench it and increase it, People not only know a little bit more metallurgy, uh, but, oh, yeah, metallurgy, actually. That's a pretty good one to put in a crafting system. Like, you could you could stick in a crafting system in late game where you need to know the proportions of the metals that you're sticking in to get, like, an ideal alloy. Like in, um, oh, there was only one game I've ever seen that has it, and it's a mod. Uh, on Minecraft, there's a mod called Tinker's Construct, which does it pretty eloquently, but I've never seen it in another video game ever. Like, I love Tinker's Construct just because you're able to make alloys and uh, that increases the effectivity of your weapon. Even if it's still in, like, a fantasy setting and it doesn't, like, show you exactly how flexible your weapon is. Like, if you're making a foil or something like that, you'd want it to be incredibly flexible because you're basically trying to whip um, your enemies to death. You're trying to nick uh, arteries and um, very, very specific pressure points with a foil. Whereas if you had a saber, you'd probably want it uh, a little bit bendy, but still very stiff, because you're going to be doing a lot of overhead sweeps and stuff like that. If you're using a hand and a half sword, you probably don't want any flex in it whatsoever, because you'd want to be parrying with it, uh, which is kind of like where you flick somebody's sword away from you after they attempt to strike you. So, like, just implementing things like that that increase the roleplay value of something is really easy. And when I say, like, quenching an item and uh, sharpening it, those are just the things right off the top of my head while I mine this here cavern. So, this isn't even me using 5% um, of my brain power. I'm just Lego talking at this point. Third point, communication. So, but the hardest point of a crafting system that I have found in every single scenario and situation that I've ever seen a crafting system is to model it in the first place. So if we craft an item here and we get the sword, that is the hardest part done. That is the hardest part. If you have just like a wheel or something and you, you just gotta hold the sword against it to sharpen it, it's as simple as that. You've already got the assets in the game. You've got a grindstone in the game, just allow us to sharpen the weapon with it. You've already got the model of the sword in the game. Just allow us to sharpen it. It just changes kind of like a, a back end thing. It doesn't even have to change how the item looks. And when you quench something, again, doesn't have to change how it looks. Just a bucket of oil, you drop the sword in it. It's just a, 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 an effect of steam. And then, boom, you've doubled the replayability of all of the crafting systems. Add alloys to that, and people will come to your game as first point of call when they want a complex crafting system. Like, that's why I come to this game. It's because it's fairly complex with its crafting. So, uh, when I talk about this game that I am developing right now, it's kind of like a visual novel. It's called You Are Dog. I've already programmed in a bunch of different mechanics, like a Pokemon-style battling system. That one's in there already. Uh, murder mysteries, pick a paths, uh, everything you do matters. And we haven't implemented it yet, simply because the artist that I am waiting on, she actually needs to write this up before I can implement it in the game. But 
Whenever you choose what dog you want to play as right at the start of the game, which also affects the choices that you can do. If you're a small dog, then you won't be able to do a lot of fighting. And if you're a big dog, chances are you won't be able to riz, riz the other dogs around the neighborhood into doing things for you. Because you're just big and scary and no one wants anything to do with you. But whenever you select the dog, just at the bottom of the screen, uh, maybe if I blow myself up like this, at the bottom of the screen, just like way down here, it's just going to be the snoot. That's it. That's all that changes, other than, like, the potential paths that you can take. So, yeah. I'll post it in the fun art channel. Yeah, I'll take a look at it soon. Red Rux, your suit is done? Yes! Uh, he made you a suit for cancelling Half-Life 3, which, honestly, is probably the first public service purple guys ever endeavoured on. To be quite honest, I'm very happy to see that. But it's so weird, isn't it? I don't know why so many developers just kind of, like, make a game, and then they're all like, oh, well, the bare minimum of the game is done. Next project, please. Why don't they tack on skin DLCs? Because, honestly, there's only three tiers of machines. It would be so easy to reskin these machines to just have, like, gold trims and bougie looks and stuff like that. People would pay for that. If they're sinking more time into playing the game than was developed in the game, then chances are people are going to pay for skin packs. Like, it, it's just a thing. It's just a thing. I, I don't know why it's, it's such a weird thing these days for developers to kind of add in like a one dollar skin pack for the fans even if it was a dollar like so many people would buy it it would pay for itself very quickly you'd only need one graphic designer because you already have the models of the assets you, you don't need anything else also trying to go as far back here as i possibly can so we get the most resources out of our machines that we already have <sighs> you might be stuck in the suit forever but whatever that's fine that's fine red rux doesn't mind he actually quite likes being, uh, he likes the same thing over and over again. I think he's got a touch of the tism. Fun fact, I am also holding S Team Cherry hostage so that Silk Song never comes out. Who's Team Cherry? Is that a, um, is that a hub thing? Is that something that I should know about adult entertainment? I don't know, I don't watch that stuff. I got a, I got a pretty girlfriend, I, I don't need that stuff. And my brother told me how to chase the lag. <laughs> that actually, that's very relevant to this game. I, d I don't know if that was intentional, but chasing the lag is kind of the way of beating this game. Once, the, once you've beaten, once you have the game kind of working at such a rate as the game crashes every time you launch it, that's how you know you've beaten it. You've just beaten it by that point. Oh, the people that made Hollow Knight. Oh, that's on the list as well. A lot of people have been requesting I play that one too. I was saying something else and it did not show up, so sorry. That's okay. I don't mind. It's super strange. It's super, super strange. I don't know why so many people do that. Uh, the intent that I went into that uh, formal education in IT, the intent that I had was to start a publishing company. Because when I was a teenager, I made mods for games. I made games I never published. Uh, and it was all based out of insecurities. And I don't really want people to kind of like growing up ever feeling like me ever. Because I was, I was rife with insecurities. I was definitely not a person worth knowing back when I was a teenager. Like, I was funny and fun to hang out with and stuff like that, but I was, I, I was just so insecure, and it always showed through. Just deleting full games after you create them as well. So, I, people like me, they're, they're everywhere. They are literally everywhere. If I could, like, publish games on behalf of people who were too insecure to publish them themselves and then pay them for that, I could have started the careers of potentially some of the greatest developers mankind has ever known. <laughs> like some of the most creative minds in the world. I know Team 17 and Tiny Build kind of also do this thing, but they're very corporate in how they do it. And I, I don't really think like corporatization of a one or two man development team is, is really the right way forward for anybody. Like, if people are just happy to have a tiny indie studio and make tiny little games just because people really, really like those tiny games, I'm not going to get in the way of that creative process, much like Team 17 and Tiny Build. It doesn't make any sense to kind of get in the way of that, does it? I was saying the lyrics of that, I just lost my dog meme song. Oh, that sucks. That, that that's, that's sad to hear. You don't need to sing. With Fruity Loops, you can sort of make your voice 50% AI. Oh, God, I hate AI so much. AI is going the wrong direction, to be quite honest. Because when AI was first, like, promoted as a thing, people were all like, oh, no, AI is going to take our jobs, and no one's ever going to be able to find any work. And what's actually ended up happening is AI is now 
gradually replacing arts and culture, which is the only place that computers just don't belong. I have, I have such a stick up my bum about AI. I, I hate the concept of it. It's, it's a terrible thing. It's not good. It's not a good thing. Especially now that people are using it to commit crimes like that big Mr. Beast uh, deep fake thing as well. You can manually tune it also? Yeah, I manually tune things. If you like Fruity Loops, you'd probably like Reaper. If you if you find it kind of found all of the limitations with Fruity Loops, then Reaper will accommodate. Reaper always accommodates with that kind of stuff. Reaper's awesome. I love Reaper. It can make a crap guitar sound like it's uh, <laughs> played by Axl Rose. No, he's a singer. Who's the guitarist of Guns N' Roses? Who knows? Axl F? AI should never have existed. I, like, it's got a place. I definitely don't think it should just not exist, but I don't think it should be making art. Because it's now at the point where actual artists can no longer make a living because AI is kind of like generating a bunch of crap and uh, people who don't necessarily look at a lot of, of, of art can't really tell the difference anymore. Uh, the next people to go down after the artists are probably going to be film studios because AI is getting to the point where it can generate um, video at a quality that people can't really tell the difference of. And obviously there are ways of telling the difference of AI-generated videos, like the amount of fingers and thematic consistencies and whether or not somebody walks through a door and comes out the other side and that kind of stuff. But it's it, 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 you've got to look hard for that kind of stuff. You've got, you got to have a vigilance on the internet that people are not on the internet to have. People are on the internet to be entertained. They aren't interested in, you know, being so vigilant about people lying to them about what they're being entertained by, that kind of stuff. We've made it as the internet Oppenheimer who created the AI big boom. Oh, yeah, that is a really good quote, actually. That is genius. I'm an artist and I hate it when I see AI art. Yeah, I'm not even an artist. I hate it when I see AI art just because I know that it kind of, like... It robs from the intent of art, which is expression. Computers cannot express because they are not sentient. Therefore, a computer it just can't create good art, objectively. They can create pretty art and uh, that'll attract people to it, but... It robs the idea of art and culture in the first place. So I think Generation Alpha is really going to have a struggle when it comes to, like, cultural things, simply because they don't understand why culture is even important anymore with the, um, with the induction of AI. Because now you're getting music that's being generated by AI, and it's hard to tell whether or not it's human or not. And sometimes the AI-generated music is better than human-made music. Like, um, Heart on My Sleeve? That one that featured the AI voices of The Weeknd and Drake, that was good. That was good. I would have listened to that and think, oh, finally, Drake doesn't suck ass. But as it turns out, no, Drake still sucks ass, and um, the guy who made that AI art is being sued for using the likeness of Drake by the people who own the likeness of Drake. I remember who that was, but it was quite funny, actually. I saw when the, um, when the court hearings were coming out, uh, they, they were being sued. The... AI writer was being sued for using the likeness of Drake or the persona of Drake, which was owned by his record label, not Drake himself. So it's not like, it's not like they stole his, his voice and his personality and they're using that. It's that they stole the caricature of Drake as a character and then used that. So it was dehumanizing in the first place in the sense that Drake wasn't even really recognized as a person when they went to court. They were just like, you're stealing our patent. We've patented this man's, uh, this man's image, and, and you can't use that in your song without paying us royalties. Which is really, really crazy to think about. Uh, Drake always sucked? Yeah, definitely. I heard that Google AI can't understand Philomena Kunk's sarcasm and is treating the shows as fact. Yes! Oh, I've seen some... Oh, I was on Legal Eagle's channel yesterday while I was kind of, like, rendering the videos uh, that I recorded of the day. And I was looking at uh, some of his recent videos and turns out there was this court hearing of some lawyers that used chat gpt to do all of their law research for them and chat gpt couldn't find any evidence that supported this this case which was basically dead on arrival so chat gpt made up a bunch of cases with the formatting and stuff all in there like it, it had different fonts and stuff and it was quite obviously ai generated if you know what to look for but these lawyers just kind of like glanced at it and thought oh yeah we'll just use this submit that as evidence and then they have to take the stand and say um a bunch of stuff which was basically admitting that they lied to the judge which it, you, you don't ever want to lie to the judge because that'll get your whole case thrown out even if you even if you had a good case lying to a judge will get you barred it's a bad thing you don't even want to do that never lie to a judge even if you're not a lawyer, just don't lie to a judge. It's pretty simple. Because it bites you in the ass in the end anyway. Alright, we need more lights down here. Uh, this is really dark and dingy, uh, quite frankly. 
But we probably have enough room now to kind of like hook in all of these things. Probably don't need to mine this out. I just want to expand the amount of light that's coming down here as well. Ever since I was younger, I had a creepy old uncle feeling about Drake. Oh my god, yes. If only Millie Bobby Brown had that same feeling, huh? She... <laughs> he has always been the creepy uncle. So weird. He's such a weird guy. Such a weird, creepy uncle. Now the feeling is real. Yeah. Yeah, no. And the warning signs were all there as well. Like, Millie Bobby Brown was saying, Oh, yeah, I'm talking to Drake about, about boy advice. And he's giving me really, really good boy advice and stuff like that. And we hang out all the time privately as a, at his apartment. And you just think about that and you think, Oh, she is a... Um she is a, she is a minor in her country of residence, and not only that, but Drake is three times her age. That's weird. <laughs> like, if I was a policeman, I'd just, like, open a, an investigation just out of interest into that, just to see what the hell was going on, how the circumstances under that just happened in the first place. Uh, we probably want to set up, like, another uh, tool bench here as well, because we're probably going to be here for a wee while. So, let's go ahead and start piping in all of this stuff. We'll try and move these machines back as far in the mine as humanly possible. I think about here is probably going to be a, be a good place to start. And since it's not vertical, it's horizontal, we probably want to start building these machines on top of each other and then having, like, chutes. We want chutes. Like, lots and lots of uh, tunnels and stuff. Uh, not tunnels. Funnels. It rhymes with tunnel. But it's for cooking. Okay, I'll put that one there. Actually, we probably don't even need them all the way facing out this way, do we? Probably just pipe it into here and then just have it all the way this way. Because if we have it all the way out there, then these pipes are going to be in a little bit of an annoying spot, aren't they? The pressure's going to drop quite a bit. Maybe. Okay, how about... Because they're not really doing anything useful anyway. We just disconnect all of these machines. We put them in the ground kind of where we want to put them. Maybe here? Huh? We'll turn it around a little bit so it's facing outwards. That should be good. Uh, it's not powered though, obviously. And hopefully we'll be able to stick a conveyor belt right underneath it. I don't know if we can though. It's looking promising though. That actually, that is very functionally useful. Not only... Okay, we're actually more efficient now as well because we are recessed one block deeper into the soil too. Which I don't really think is necessary, but it's going to save us some space vertically. All right, let's go ahead and take, well, or not. We won't take that conveyor off. We'll just put another pipe down in front of this thing right here. We want to be able to access these pipes as well. And we pr this probably isn't going to be the only line of pipes that we have going down. Good, good. And another one probably here. And now we want to, oh, we need the building hammer to disconnect this bloody conveyor belt, don't we? We'll go, and, we'll go ahead and do that now. And these other machines, we'll also connect those to the... Uh, the system that we've got all the way over here too. So that outtake pipe, the one with the huge amount of pressure, that is going to function perfectly. I don't know if this is actually going to work or if we do have to lift them, but we should probably figure that out before we do anything else, right? Ooh. I like your voice. Thanks, Red Rocks. Thank you so much. I love his voice too. Oh, you guys, you're too sweet. You're too sweet. Now let's get this building hammer. Look at this building hammer and we'll knock this conveyor belt off, huh? I've always thought that I have a nice voice, especially for where I live, because New Zealand is... When you go up to the North Island, where two-thirds of our population live, they all walk around and they sound like this. They don't use their noses properly, and I'm pretty sure it's because they're always sick. Like, I'm not joking. This is how a, a, a North Island New Zealander sounds, and it's usual... Uh, maybe, maybe, like, a little bit lower. Like, this, this is how... This is how North Island New Zealanders sound. Come on, let's go get some mince pies, boys. We'll get some mince pies. You know, that kind of stuff. So I've got a very full voice, and I've also got a strange accent for where I live as well. It's kind of in between farmers rural and um, dialect from where I live, Dunedin. That's how my gran grandma sounds. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I know it is, isn't it? Like, they walk around, and nobody, nobody up there, ever, it, it never crosses their mind. But everybody who meets them who is not from the North Island of New Zealand thinks that they have a cold. So they're like, please stay away from me just a little bit. Like, I get you're a Kiwi and you're a chill guy, you're a great guy, but please just keep, keep your distance, please. Stranger danger. Don't want to, uh, <laughs> don't want to cough anything up in two and a half days, my dude. You, you keep your distance. Uh, we need the building hammer, don't we? Man, I just roasted the North Island. That was so rude of me. <laughs> okay, we'll place this down and we will unblock that. Wait, what? That's not what I... Please? 
Okay, fine. It did it. Nice! Great. I think my grandma's from northern New Zealand, though. Does she sound like this? Does she, does she walk around talking in a, mon a monotonous voice? And does she always accentuate some of her vowels into the direction that she shouldn't? Which is pretty textbook uh, uh, northern New Zealander, quite frankly. Aucklanders also have their own dialect. It's super weird, their one. I don't understand theirs at all. Uh, I kind of want to move all of this piping system. I want to move everything. I would, I, everything is about to move. I'm moving everything. I'm doing it. I'm actually about to do it. Let's shut everything down. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of everything. We're getting rid of it all. Yuck. Okay, we'll get uh, the grinder to process all of that stuff first before we kind of like double down. Wait, why is this still on? Probably because it's plugged in. Jensen, you dunce. All right, let's see if these are good. Oh, I see. So when they weren't drilling resources, it was because they were too far horizontally this way. Right. Okay, that has definitely clicked. Yes, but with a British accent. Oh, that is such a weird thing to hear. <laughs> is it like that? <laughs> we, we do actually have a strange, strange convention here in New Zealand of our elderly having artificial British voices. And I'm pretty sure it's because of the kind of like the people who moved the, uh, here from the result of World War II. A lot of them were from Scotland and, uh, you know, the, the Isles and, and England and places like that. Uh, I'm actually going to pipe in straight from this direction, by the way. We are going to do away with this horrid little conveyor system that we've got going. And we're going to go straight through here. We're going to go straight through this little wall right here. And I'm going to hope for the best with it. But yeah, yeah, my grandma has kind of like an artificial British accent too. I don't know why. I, I think it's kind of like lots and lots of British people came here, moved here after the war, after the whole Gallipoli thing where we kind of saved many, many British lives just by sacrificing uh, 30,000 of our own New Zealand troops. We seem to, we seem to have a, a good relationship with England after that. Which is weird because uh, England sentenced our soldiers to death. I, I don't really understand why we have a great relationship with England, but, you know, we do. <laughs> It's, it's like uh, going for, for drinks out at the pub with the hangman of the town. It's a little bit strange. Although, I suppose the point of a hangman is you're not supposed to know they're a hangman. That's why they wear the hood as well. So I guess we don't know that England was a hangman. Well, that was weirdly political. Sorry about all of that. She was born in New Zealand, lives in the UK. Oh, she probably just has a, um, a blended accent, if that's the case. Like, we do have a lot of people down here in southern New Zealand. Usually, they're over 60 years old at this point. And they've got this kind of like, they've got this very proper way of talking and they'll they'll put in British inflections and it's, it's very odd. It's very, very odd to hear if you don't expect it initially, especially if you're from north. And when you come down, you're like, hello now, I, I need to, I need to find the nearest mince pie shop, of course, and it needs to be artificial and it needs to taste like crap, please. Oh, absolutely. You just go around there and, and up the block. Hmm. How, how do you know? How do you know all of this if you're not from here? I don't want to say, like, a North Island is kind of like the descendants of Squidward, but the thought just crossed my mind, so I'm obligated to say it out loud. Do they talk like nerds? A little bit. If you consider nerds to be kind of like those theatre kids that obsess over elven culture, and then also insist that elven culture is not actually um, Irish, as it was supposed to be in the first place, but it's more like um, British. I've never seen British elves. Have you guys ever seen any universe... Where, they, where the elves form this gigantic empire and they go around uh, oppressing people under the guise of, I don't want to say corporations, but essentially corporate entities. They go around conquering the world with corporate entities. That is the opposite of elven, elven mythology in every single place you can find elven mythology. Like even at Dungeons and Dragons, it just doesn't happen. Because, you know, the East India Trading Company, England started with the, with the whole opium trade and stuff like that, and they uh, cornered the, the world's market in tea as well after um, opiates stopped doing so well because they were illegal for a while uh, globally. I think that was the point of the Boston Tea Party, right, was to throw out all of the British supply of, of opium and, and stuff like that, but they accidentally got the, the tea instead. So um, the, the Brits just started drinking the, the seawater. Disgusting as well. Don't know how you can put salt in your, in your tea. Uh, we need the building hammer over here full-time, I think. We've got a lot of things that are just kind of, like, nailed down. All right, let's go ahead and unblock these. Good. And we also want to unblock every single one of these things as well, because we're about to move all of these conveyor systems away from here. Because this is a revolting-looking setup. To be quite honest, I do not like the Sam I am. 
I do not like how we've set up uh, our green eggs and ham. All right, good. So, let, uh, let's get the building hammer. We'll unplug these ones too. Bang, 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 bang. And now we probably only need one of these lifts because we've also got another one right here, which is just absolutely gorgeous. Good, those are all out of the way. Pipes are liftable as well. That's pretty cool. Great. And this one as well. Doesn't need to be a bend because we're going to just line it in straight up. Uh, these can move over here. V nice, V nice, V nice. I'm going to shift that onto the ground, of course. Uh, we probably don't want to line in all of the piping systems going this way now, do we? Unless we just want to keep the infrastructure we've got here. Yeah, so all of this is just piping. We have an on and off switch for the grinder. Wait, yeah, let's move all of this piping as well. We probably don't need it where it actually is. Why do we install this sideways? Ooh, gross. I know we're literally just about to like move this around, but let's let's actually put that on there so it's supposed to be on there. We'll get everything put into where it's supposed to be going as well. Uh, we're gonna move these hooks and such. Okay, uh, a little bit of iron fell on the ground there. Can't lose that, that's very valuable. Uh, so, oh, that's why. <laughs> that makes so much sense. All right, let's get rid of this pipe right here. Now we're gonna elbow this, uh, whoop, okay. That's not what I wanted whatsoever. Thank you, game, I suppose. Why is it, the hell? Okay, let's lift that off of those pipes. Uh, this one has to pipe in from this away, like that, and we need the other one to pipe in from beneath, like so. And then we want the lift on there. And the reason we want this is because we are so close to the machines this way, and not necessarily if we have to pipe in from the corner of the map. So it's more of a matter of pressure than anything else. <sighs> Do they make uh, 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 noises when saying oh? Uh, yeah, kind of actually. Well, I know you're from Dun-Eaton, so I'm this close to finding your IP and debit card details. Dun-Eaton! No, it's Dun-Eaton, my dude! It's Gaelic for New Edinburgh! It's a, it's a Gaelic thing. Because most of us here are Scots. This is a... We're a Scottish settlement. We're a Scot... We're Scottish here! This is a Scottish place. Have none of those yucky Englishmen here. Ugh! Which is why it's so surprising that uh, we're so accommodating of English culture uh, down here in Dunedin. Uh, Edinburgh, um, the actual place in Scotland, is our sister city. So we have a lot of art and culture stuff to do with them. Unless AI gets a hold of it, in which case we're probably going to lose that. That'll be a, a horrible day, <laughs> to be quite honest. All right, I'll put the hook facing this way here. That's the centralizer. I don't necessarily think we need it there. We probably want it further up the chain. But we are also going to need the gem polisher. Probably right in front of it right there. That's a good one. Nice. Is this going to go straight through? No. We're going to have to get the pickaxe and we're going to have to mine out some more of this wall right here. Okie dokie. Let's do that. Good. Woohoo. Dude, that is not cool. Not even funny. I'm pretty open about where I live. It's just like, don't, don't dox people. Is also the thing that I say on my channel. Just don't dox yourself. Don't dox me. Don't dox anyone in chat. It's just a, a rude thing to do and you'll get, you'll catch a ban for it. If someone unironically doxes somebody on my uh, channel or any of the platforms that I have, I will exercise my right of speech and uh, permanently ban them. Real fast. I'm not even, not even going to think about it twice either. All right, good. Let's go ahead and get rid of all of this. I'm a leaf. Okay, bye spray paints. You have a great night or day. I don't know what time it is in your country because you haven't doxxed yourself. Congratulations. Uh, let's go ahead and put that down. We'll plug in the rest of this crap and it is crap. Yes, maybe here. But we also have to make sure that this is going in the right direction too. So let's place that back down. Right over here, last one, last conveyor going on. Uh, we can probably get rid of this whole system right here. So let's get this water hook off of there. We'll take the straight pipe and we'll try and pipe into here. V good, V good, V good. Actually, what does that helmet do? We got this helmet and we haven't used it yet. It's supposed to help us find veins, isn't it? Can we just like put it on? Yes. Good. All right. Uh, we'll come in here. What does this do? Does it just turn the gears whenever there's a vein of ore? Does it even work? Are there ores in the game? Was this helmet a waste of money? I don't know. Find out more at six. Okay, I'm gonna leave that on the ground where it belongs because it's actually a piece of garbage. Uh, we are probably gonna need this one. No, it's actually facing the wrong way. Bugger. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and stick this bad boy right here. Good. And we'll probably have to pipe in with a bunch of the new pipes as well. From here onwards. Or do we? Because we probably... Yeah, so actually, we... Mm. You know what? Yeah. No, we can do that. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll take this pipe right here. We'll throw it on the ground. And it can be an elbow instead that pipes into the sorting system infrastructure that we already have right here, which I'm going to replace with a T pipe. Good. Now we need a T pipe. It's way over here, I think. And take that one, I think. Yep, T pipe. Excellent. Good. Let's go ahead and go through here. Uh, we want to pipe this one right there. Flip that over. Good. And we need one more elbow. I don't have one in this. Dirty little pond that I found myself knee deep in. There we go. There's an elbow right here. Good. And we'll put this one kind of like one further inwards. I'm pixel hunting. Please. Good. And we also want that off. Yes, we want that off. Now, everything after this is virtually worthless. Even this conveyor system right here. So we have to move all of this. We also do want a very unique uh, on and off switch for this grinder right here in case we kind of need to do anything with it, but I highly doubt that we will. Uh, we're probably also going to want to move all of this mess of cables and stuff over here too. Maybe to over here. So it's a little bit closer to the thoroughfare that we're actually using. Yeah. Or, no, we don't want to do that whatsoever. So this is going to be the machinery pipe. Which could probably... We could probably actually expand that all the way. That way. Which means we have to replace these two machines and stick them coming out here and then we can elbow it going straight down uh, probably across this conveyor belt but just above us and we'll have that powering the machine so that we have the most pressure available i like that that's that's a really really good shout let's do all of that so that's going to stay there we probably need to fix what we've uh, messed up on here as well yep perfect put that there uh, we've got two straight pipes i'm not going to leave them in the dirt right there i'm going to flip them around so we can reuse them Oop. overshot that jump a little bit that's absolutely fine and stick that one over here you're gonna need a lot more conveyor belts though because we're building way deeper into the mine i think okay so all of this also has to move yeah so these are the water filtered ones we want to move every single one of these pipes essentially away from here and we want to put the water filters uh, still above the thoroughfare that we are creating right now. So that we still have kind of like the automated repair systems. Which is going to be a lot easier done than said, to be quite easy, to be quite honest. There's only so much planning you can do before everything just kind of falls into place. All right, good. There's a T-pipe here. We don't need that. Elbow, we don't need that. Straight pipe, we definitely need that. We're going to stick it all the way over here. Good. Maybe there is going to be another episode of this coming out. I think that... I'm feeling that there is going to be another episode coming out. All right, I'll put that there. I don't like these pressure intake pipes. I don't like them because when the bar runs out, the pressure intake pipe then stops the entire uh, workflow. It stops the entire system, and we don't necessarily want that. Uh, we've got another lift here. I'm not really worried about what this does. Unless we use it to drop into a grinder at the end of this chain right here, which we could very well do. Why don't we do that? Let's do that. Okay, uh, so we need a lot of these conveyor belts, which we do have just over here. We can start linking these ones in because they're not doing anything otherwise. That is the right orientation. Very nice. Let's put that there. This one here can go all the way over. Whoops, there's two of them on the same place. Don't want that. Let's go ahead, grab this, and let's stick that there. And we'll come over here and we'll put this back on the chain. We've got another one here with a hook centralizer on it. That's pretty good. We'll put that uh, hook centralizer right in front of those other machines down there, I think. Uh, what machine is this? That's a straight conveyor. Perfect. We want to stick this on the automation chain here. Good. Uh, this is becoming a little bit high, so we probably are going to need the lift anyway. Yeah, I think we are going to need the lift. Oh. Okay, so... All of the VOD boys watching, uh, I, I did that ho because uh, of the song. The song we're listening to on the stream. By the way, if you want to come watch the stream and hang out, you're welcome to. Don't be a stranger. Okay, get that one. Put this one over here. I'm so glad we got so many of these pipes. Uh, so this one's going to go. have to go straight that way. 
Good. So one more straight pipe, and then we'll elbow into this from below, I think. Like so. And then we want another elbow. No, we don't. It... Yeah, we do. We want an elbow to make it go... No, we don't want an elbow to make it go up whatsoever. We don't want that. Uh, let's drop, drop that on the ground. Uh, I'm going to grab the straight pipe. I'm going to put it there. Put another straight pipe. We're running low on straights, believe it or not. Uh, we want to put the elbows here, don't we? Because this is probably where we're going to want to put the grinder. So we're going to lift that. We might want to put that here. So that'll lift into the grinder, which still needs to be one block up higher. So we're going to actually need two lifts, I think. Yeah, so we're going to need to take the straight pipe right here. We'll put an elbow right here. We'll move this one up by one. And then we will elbow in from above, like so. And one right here. And now we actually, believe it or not, we need another lift to go into the top of that. Yeah, so if we have a lift here, then we can put the grinder right there as well. Oh, just hit my head on the roof here. The grinder. I know we've made a bit of a mess, but we are about to make an end game uh, water farm. So this goes here. So two conveyors will go there and there. That is definitely going to lift right into the right place. Perfect. And we've got a pretty low little ground here too. So we can always stick more of the... We can stick more of the pipes above here as well. It, it doesn't matter so much. Okay, so we need to go conveyor shopping at this point. We need two lifts. No, we need one lift. We need heaps of straights. And I don't know if that is the bend that we already have over here. No, it is not. That is the wrong direction. Okay. We don't want to bury our tools. Let's move that away. We're going to take this hook centralizer and we're going to stick it on the workflow right here, I think, so that we can just get a huge line of machines all along here, pumping out resources at a rate that may crash the game, which I consider success. Good. Conveyors. We're going to need billions of them now, I think. Oh, we've also got another splitter up there, but that's completely useless to us. Uh, I'll take the one with the electrical cables. What's this? Ah, uh, it's just a gem compressor. Not interested. We'll go up top. We're not making any resources right now either. And we're going to see whether or not we can actually embed all of those pipes into the ground before we start moving the uh, kind of auto repair system that we've got, I think. Because we need to set up a conveyor just in case they do work. And we also need to pipe in uh, some resources way back there just in case they don't actually want to harvest from the map. And they actually need a little block of dirt up their bum bum. Okay. So we'll come up here. And now we need heaps of conveyors. We're going to need heaps of conveyors now. Heaps and heaps and heaps of them. Put that there. Mm, don't know how many we need. We need a right bend. I think. Uh, yeah, so we've got a left bend. We need a right bend. And we're going to need a bunch of these straights right here. Like heaps and heaps and heaps of them. So let's just go mm -hmm. ahead and get a million of these. Because we're going to need them regardless. And it doesn't really matter if we over-purchase as long as we don't under-purchase. Ooh getting lots and lots of these. It feels so good being at the tier 3 uh, area of the uh, game. Uh, uh. Alright, that one just rolled out of... That sucks. That's so annoying. We Not only does it roll out and we have to wait for it to stop rolling, but we have to put it back in the cart as well. Okay, let's just drop them straight on their corner right here. Probably for good reason too. Get lots and lots of these bad boys. Uh, uh. Probably maybe like three more. One... Two, three. They're 220 each. Let's see how many we got. We could probably just divide the math, right? What do we got? 6,000. Okay, so we got about uh, four. Uh, we got about 20 of them. That'll probably do the trick for now. We'll probably need more once we start crafting more of the uh, tier three machines, but we're not going to need anything else just yet. I'm not going to take the stairs because it takes time to turn while we're on this bad boy here, this cart. So I'm going to jump off this ledge right here, land straight on this bridge. Which I'm getting very good at doing. I can now do it with a card on my back. And we're going to go all the way back here. And we're going to start dumping all of these conveyors in a sequence. It's going to be a really, really good little bit of fun. Oh, we didn't get a lift, did we? No, we didn't get a lift. But we can go up there and get a lift. If it's the only thing we need, that's fine. Okay, need one there. One there. Is this in the right orientation? I'd say. Really, I'd say. So we don't want 
any of the conveyors to necessarily pipe into these, do we? We just kind of want to have a switch just over here. So this probably actually just bend sideways. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, sideways like that. And I think we could just get away with putting like a straight here with a water valve hook on it. I'm going to move this um, card of pipes out of the way. Good. And we want to put an elbow not against there, but we want it one further back. Like maybe there would be perfect. Excellent. Uh, yeah, so we need another elbow. I'll do the pipes first before I do anything else. Good. That can go right there. And now we need one more straight. Perfect. That straight can go right there. So we'll get a water valve hook, which we uh, have a couple of ahead of us. We'll put that in there, and then I'll go back up to the shop and get a lift before I forget, because I don't really want to turn this entire thing on and then just have all of the resources uh, creating a gigantic clump. All right, there we go. Uh, I'll turn that off. That's what that means. Good, perfect. And now should be pretty much a-okay. Uh, I'll be right back, by the way. I think... I smell something weird. I think I smell something burning. Best of luck to you. You got a new sub. Thank you so much, Nick to Nico Silver. No, it's toast. I smell burnt toast. So either I'm having a stroke right now. No, I'm not having a stroke right now. Uh, I think my flatmate just burned toast. What a guy. I'm at a different building as well. So that's got to be a real heinous burn. Okay, so looking around here. we Yeah, we need the lift. I don't want to forget that we need the lift because otherwise we will be dumping all of our dirt and poos and stuff that could be resources onto the ground, which is just annoying, isn't it? Did you leave the stove on? Uh, no. No, I did not. No, I'm pretty good about that. My flatmates, on the other hand, not so great at it. Okay, good. I'm all the way up here. It does happen. How are you? How are you? Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the BFD division. It's weird. I've got, like, I've got alerts on the screen that should be popping up for new subscribers. Just kind of like, a, hey, uh, so-and-so is subscribed. But it doesn't work so well. Probably want to get one of these mining helmets so we can see what we're doing as well. Uh, let's get this lift right over here. And I am going to get a... Oh, my God! <laughs> that, that was exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> it always jump scares me as well. Okay, let's drop that right there. 684 buckery boos. I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and put this helmet on. And we'll run all the way down here. It's kind of weird that we are seeing our own shadow against this conveyor belt. Because we are not having the light cast behind our head. Unless we're wearing this helmet backwards. Which would be stupid in the first place. You might end up like Doggo Meme, this is fine. <laughs> ah, well, it'll make for really good content if that's the case. I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with this, it's fine. That's a good attitude to have in life, honestly. Uh, we want to hook that onto there, don't we? Yes, that is perfect. And we've got everything else. It does actually allow us to see a little bit better, but, you know, still not amazingly ideal. I'm actually just going to hook into one of these machines and see if they will turn on. Whoops. Like here, I'm going to take this one. That's Whoops, I threw my helmet on the ground. That's stupid. Why is that even a thing? I'm going to take this T-pipe. I'm going to replace it right here. Probably could have just used an elbow, but I didn't. And now we need to straighten an elbow, I think? Yeah, perfect. This one goes right there. Is that on? No. Is this actually hooked up and piped in? It might not be. Uh, no, it is not. Embarrassing. Okay, we'll move this lift because this has to be a T-pipe, which is absolutely fine because we can take this one out right here and swap them. This has to be a T-pipe because we want to be able to hook everything into this little point of call here. Like so. Perfect. And now we want the... I, mm, we could probably actually stick all of the auto repair stuff facing out this way if we just kind of like have all the waters go all the way around here. And this one should also not be a straight but an elbow, because otherwise, again, we'll be losing water pressure anyway. Elbow! Elbow! There you are. Good boy! We'll grab this, and we'll put this right there. So, we need this straight to go there, and we need two more elbows, kind of like jury rig what we're working on here. Okay! Okay! Let's put this on right there. Excellent! Great, uh, let's get some more elbows. One more elbow. And we can test this entire system. Oops, that was uh, clumsy. There, okay, everything should be more or less piped in. But, oh, oh, no, it's not. No, none of it's piped. Well, yes, it is, actually. Okay, so we turn this on. 
all of the conveyors start. Nothing should be pumping out. All right, let's see if we got power in this bad boy. We have no power whatsoever. Okay, is the grinder functional at least? No, but if we turn this on, yes, the grinder is now functional. So we can put the lift here now and uh, have a clear conscience of the resources. Oh, I'm stuck. That's embarrassing. So down here is going to work the convey. Oh, I didn't plug it in. That was silly. All right. Let's go ahead and not put it in just yet. Just make sure that the handle is off. I think that is off. Good. Plug that in. Is it lit up? No. That doesn't work whatsoever. So we do need to stick some soil down for it to pull from. That's okay. We can do that. Uh, we'll dismantle everything that we have over here, because now we know. And we're definitely getting pressure, so we, we are only missing soil. Like, here. Perfect. And then we'll stick that one there, that one can go there, and that one can go there. Are we missing one? I think we're missing a drill. We didn't have four. We had five, didn't we? Drill? This? No? One, two, three, four, five. We did have five! Where's the last drill? Weird. Uh, let's take this water pressure hook and we'll move it uh, down closer to where we're actually walking. Working. Like, here is probably a really good place to be putting it. 170 is still pretty damn good, actually. Wow. Uh, we don't particularly care about these pipes too much. We definitely want a different pipe, I think, for the machines. And we've already got this gigantic system set up there, but it's not really doing a hell of a lot. All right, let's go ahead and stick this down so that the grinder doesn't ever ejaculate anything that's not straight onto this conveyor system. Uh, I'm also going to stick down the core stone outtake pipe uh, that we need to stick down because I've forgotten to do so. I forgot to do it for the conveyor belts. Wee! Right here. Okay, good. I'm just going to leave this in the water because we're done with it. Let's go ahead and shove that right there. Very nice. So that's going to be significantly faster, I think. We go and take a look at the water pressure hook. It was at 170 before. Now it's at 270. That is insane. Wow. How fast is it? Let's see. Let's stand on it. Oh. Yep, that functions. That goes. All right, good. I'm going to stick this on the... Whoa, look at him go. Never mind. He disappeared. Oh, running against this is now actually kind of tricky. Funny. All right, so I'm thinking with this gigantic system that we've kind of uh, set up here, maybe we just pipe in straight down there. Like, just a straight shot down into that cave right there. And then we have the... Yeah, so we could set the auto repair system just in this little spot right here if we mine it out a little bit better. But we are going to need this pipe right here to basically just dump... Yep, just like that. All right, we're not going to go upwards this time. We're going to go straight through. Uh, any more straights? Yep, plenty of them. Go ahead and put that one there. This elbow will not be used for a wee while. Stick that one there. This one here can go there. This one can go there. This one can go there. We can probably actually just stick the auto repair system like along here as well. Might be a good idea because it's got very good access. Let's actually do that. Let's just do that. We'll pipe in all of the sorting system from just through here. Because otherwise we'll have an annoying little bend. And we have to we have to expand all of this out through the cave system anyway. So why not? Why not just utilize what we have? Uh, where's the pickaxe? I'm going to get rid of these little hunks of dirt that are on the ground. One, two, three, four, five. We are missing a machine, which is a little bit of a shame. I don't know where it went. Maybe it blew up with the nukes. But I'm not too worried about it, to be quite honest. Let's go ahead and keep piping this through. A lot of sea pipes. A lot of T-pipes over here. One there. A lot of T-pipes, actually. I think that's virtually all of the straights that not already holding these water hooks. Okay, we'll put all of these water hooks down here and we'll set this up eventually. But we won't do it just yet. All right, grab this one. And this one too. Put that there. Because we want to know that the machines are actually pumping out before we kind of commit to um, setting up the entire automation. For the repair system down here... All right, we need lots of straight pipes now. Put one of the drills in the open area since it's mostly soil. I could do that, but we get gradually uh, increasing resources the further back than the machines go. So ideally what we'd want is to just have a heap of machines all the way down here 
against this back wall. Even if it's slightly slower, we have a core stone outtake pipe, so it's still going to be uh, processing at an alarming rate. That's annoying. Let's get rid of that. So everything from here on is basically done functional. We're just going to need to convey it all in. Uh, we need a uh, turn, which I'm pretty sure we did buy. We just didn't buy the actual lift itself. I think that's the thing we forgot. Here it is. I think this is the one we need. Nope, that is the wrong way. That's a right conveyor. We do have a left conveyor, though. Where is it? I'm certain this is a left conveyor. No, this is also a right conveyor. Okay, we bought two rights. That's a little frustrating. When does your Minecraft stream start? Um, it depends. If it is going to be voted on in the YouTube community on my channel, then chances are I'll be starting it next week, and I'm not going to be doing co-op yet. I'm going to be doing a giant vanilla run-through before I go into the co-op aspect, and co-op's going to be... Almost entirely modded, the cold gold. Uh, Juju, right? God, everyone changes their username so frequently, I can't keep up these days. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the shop so we have something in this corner right here. We need a left bend this time. We, we can't get away with a right bend, unfortunately. And we also need lots and lots of straight pipes. So let's go ahead and take the pipe part. We'll just refuel this bad boy while we are kind of at the store, I think. Because we've still got an, an absolute arseload of money to spend. We literally cannot poo fast enough. A little bit of spittle on my microphone right there. You're gonna try once human? Oh my god, I, I have tried it. I've already put 50 hours into that game. It is so much fun. I played it on release. Everybody was review bombing it at release saying, oh, there's a this, this scummy company demands that you give them your ID so that they can scrape your data and sell it to advertisers. And then I looked into this on the day it released and I was like, hmm, there's actually no evidence of this anywhere, except for some Twitter bots that just made up a bunch of crap. Although the Twitter bots were all citing the privacy policy, so I went and I read the privacy policy, and it said that they will collect ID and other like social media accounts from you when you give it to them, and you have to give it to them to uh, get like access to perks, like if you connect your YouTube channel and get some skins and stuff like that. They don't do anything with that information though. It's literally just like connect your social media and we'll connect you with something that looks cool. Um, you did have to give them your ID if you live in a country where the country kind of restricts your access to online games, like China, like China does. China does this uh, because they think that kind of like MMOs and games that are just time sinks are a detriment to society. So they want to collect your ID so that they can verify whether or not it is you playing these games. They can monitor your, your internet usage. Uh, other than that, you don't have to give them a single thing and thus they will not collect a single piece of data. So it was a little annoying when the game came out, uh, <laughs> to be quite honest. But yeah, I've been playing it basically by myself solo. It is so much fun. Social media though does that already. Well, maybe not the ID, but your info to sell to advertisements. Yeah, social media definitely does it. It's the biggest market in the world that has overtaken um, video gaming. It's quite funny. The data market is actually a more lucrative market annually than gaming these days. And it's only increasing as people kind of go more digitally as well. But there is a huge difference between going on Facebook and Facebook brokering a deal between somebody who's selling ads on Facebook to you being in a, de in a demographic to assuming, oh, this online game is going to somehow magically get my identification. They're going to get my driver's license, my passport, my birth certificate. How are they going to be doing this? I'm so confused. Oh, I just, I hate the game. I better leave a bad review. It's just stupid. Like, there's so much brain rot on the internet these days, and it's just so sad. When a game that fun comes out, and everyone slams it because they can't read. Like, that was it. it uh, people couldn't read, and that's why that game had um, mostly ne negative reviews. It wasn't overwhelmingly negative. It was mostly negative reviews on the few days it came out. And then those uh, crybabies uh, went back to Twitter to kind of like, I don't know, just seethe in their pits of misery and disgust. Uh, and everybody who actually wanted to play the game in the first place played the game and had a great time without those um, those those Twitter uh, wankers. It's quite nice, actually. Uh, I'm not too far in it. I think I got one character on server five, like I said, I played it on day one, that ended up getting to about level 26, but I've got a little technique of how to build characters so that you can one-hit any enemy with a crit um, 10 levels above you very consistently as well. So... I'm on another server and I, I'm tackling on 
enemies, not raids, because they kind of level lock you for the raids. I'm taking on enemies that are about 10 levels above me, and I'm growing very, very quickly. I don't have a lot of time to play it, though. Oh, okay. Didn't want to pick up this table. A lot of people have requested that I do play it, but they don't kind of, like, come back saying, hey, yeah, I do actually want to see this. It was just a recommendation. No, uh, nobody's come back. <laughs> like, I'll do, like, public lobbies or something like that if somebody requests it enough, but no one has. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to wait for that Steam notice then. What Steam notice? Stream notice? Steam notice? For once human? It will come. It will definitely come. I'm probably actually going to play a bunch of it next week. Although, I do live in New Zealand and the closest servers to us are... I think it's Japan, which is not necessarily close. They're kind of a, a, a country we have a lot of trade to do with, but they are way further away than people give them credit for. It's significantly further away than Australia, and there's no servers in Australia to my understanding. So unfortunately, I'm, I'm kind of caught with my um with my pants down in this instance. Okay. Let's go ahead and drop all these pipes in here. We're going to need heaps of them. Heaps and heaps and heaps of them. Probably need more elbows, actually. Oh, uh, no, we actually just needed all of these straights, didn't we? So we don't need heaps of elbows. Let's just go ahead and buy what we've got. And we also need a left bend, don't we? So we're going to put that in the car just before we forget. Right conveyor, left conveyor. Perfect. This is what we need. Chuck this in the shopping trolley right there. And we'll buy it. 25 grand. Shop change. Didn't even make a dent in our pocket. No actual steam, considering how hot the cave and the steam... Cave isn't the steam monster. What, is that a thing in Once Human? I've basically been rolling for Mr. Wish on Once Human. That's That's been my most recent project. I've been going through the, um... The raid with the, the guy with the TV head standing outside of it, telling you to basically do bounties. You do that raid over and over again, and there's a really low chance of dropping a deviation called Mr. Wish, who is basically a rabbit with a gun. I shouldn't have to tell you just how powerful that could potentially be. A deviant with a gun. <laughs> kind of speaks for itself, doesn't it? All right, let's go ahead and move this out of the way, because it is in the way. Go ahead and drop that there. It was kind of jitter jittering around a little bit. Wasn't too keen on whatever was going to happen after that. Let's go ahead and drop that down there so that these machines function when we actually do end up hooking them up. Get some more straights. Uh, we should probably just move the cart of pipes over here instead of this cart of conveyor belts, which serves literally no function on that side of the room. Okay, good. Take this one here. And we'll jump over here. Great. Nice. Okay, let's get some straight pipes connected up here until we hit a wall and we need to kind of like divert. With an, with an elbow. Whoops. Had a hiccup there. Good. And whoops. They're probably going to need to divert it here. Because we're getting real close to that wall. We'll also drop it by one as well. But I think the higher we have it, the better it functions. Right? Yeah. We want it, we want it up off the ground early. Okay. I'm actually going to take the pipes now and work my way backwards from these machines. Because we're going to need a few T-pipes on top of them. To these ones right here. Going to jam that right there. Hopefully, that will function. Hard, kind of hard to tell, though, without shoveling anything beneath it. Uh, let's go ahead and stick a straight right here. We'll convey it as well. And I'm pretty sure that should be the entire s sorting system basically hooked up, right? So we can kind of test this immediately. We just get one more conveyor belt in front of here. Uh, we'll go get our tier 3 shovel. And then we'll shovel some dirt up its bum bum. Where is our T3 shovel? There it is. Great. The pipes are about too symmetrical. That's fine. That's fine if they're, if they're too symmetrical. We don't mind too much. Uh, we're going to be sorting up a lot of logistics on this giant pipeline anyway. Okay, let's go ahead and get some dirt from somewhere. Maybe up there. And I'll shovel it into the bum of this. All right, did that, did that do anything? It's not piped in. All right, let's pipe this in. Let's do that. Uh, let's go ahead and move this out of the way because it's not useful there anymore either. Let's go ahead and get some straight pipes and we'll just plug them in. Plug and play. There. Oops, that's the whole cart. That's embarrassing. Put it there. And now we're going to start just grabbing and chucking. One there and one. Whoops, I fell off. Please. I'm pixel hunting. One there. One here. One up here. One over here. And another one just over here, right there, and put one just over here. Should probably move the cart as well, because the conveyor belt is starting to piss me off a little bit. 
And I'll just drop it there. That should be fine. Okay. So we'll drop that one there. And we'll drop this one there. Now we probably should just start digging away at the wall here so that the pipes have access. Then we probably don't really need to kind of like lift this weird elbow that we kind of got going. All right, where is that pickaxe? Where do I drop it? Got to be somewhere. That is the shovel. That is the cart. Got to be over here. No, that's the builder's hammer. Right there. Good. Need to get a tool rack on this side of the, uh, the workstation too, to be quite honest. Okay. So we'll dig all of this stuff out right here. And we should have good access for the pipes. We basically want to conserve as much space as possible so that we can get as many machines packed in the back here as possible. Good. I'm happy with that. We'll drop that right there. And now let's continue on with these straight pipes. Uh, there and here and here and here and then we should use an elbow yes we should definitely okay one elbow goes out there very good now we're gonna need a couple of straights to link those up right there get this one plugged there now we need an elbow to go downwards we fix great got it would it cause a collapse if you dig through the walls for another pathing? No, there is no collapsing in this game, pretty pretty fortunately. that's Honestly, if there was collapsing, it would be really, really good because it would allow us to kind of mine out great deals of things at once with the nukes and stuff like that that I have kind of like used to hollow out this cavern that we've got here. Okay. So now that's all hooked in. Is the light on? Is the light on? No. It's angry with me. What if I... Okay, that's definitely getting power. And that's also definitely getting pressure. What if I put this on the other side then? Hard to tell. Take that. Put it there. You happy? No. It's not happy whatsoever. My god! Okay, let's put this here then. And then we'll just kind of like jury rig more of these pipes in, I think. Uh, we'll put this one... This is a really kind of glitchy area, by the way. Uh, there we go, finally. It took me a while, but we got there in the end. Uh, let's go ahead and put that on the ground. We'll put that one just out of the way while we get this elbow sorted. There we go. And now we want to swap this around. Done. Light? No? Nothing? Seriously? Are you taking the pith? <laughs> Why? Oh, this is so jank! This entire area is, is pretty much busted, honestly. We have had so many bugs in Ice Helm. It wouldn't allow us to mine things from the machinery over there. It's not allowing us to mine things with the machinery here. What the hell is going on with this game? It wasn't this broken last time I played it. I'm certain of it. Okay, what if we just like keep on sequentially moving it back and into the mine? Because that is definitely a tier three shovel. Yeah, it is. So there should be literally no reason this can't mine it out. What if we take it from here and then put it in there? Is that good? No? Oh my god. Okay. Wait, what was that? You want it down there? That is super weird. Oh, I see. It has to be connected to the ground. Weird? That is so strange. Why? Why is that even a thing? Okay, well, we'll see if that was the main problem. Why don't we? Let's take this pipe right here. We'll replace it with a T pipe, which we'll find all the way over here. One right here. Great. Plug this bad boy straight into here. Oops. Please? Function? Yes. Good. Okay. So, we'll move this one over as well. And we'll see if that wasn't actually the issue altogether. Probably need to face this one downwards as well. Like that. Like so. Get some dirt. And we'll put it in the ground. Don't worry, game. It's going in the ground. Ah, it functions perfectly. Excellent. All right, so we should be getting core stone out of this now. That is a gigantic chunk of gold. Good grief. All right, more. Perfect. Okay, let's hook all of these up. Let's hook every single one of these machines up so that we have the best chance possible. Uh, we don't want to hook these other two up just yet, though, until we get a conveyor down in front of it. So let's go ahead and do that right this second. There we go. 
Uh, we're also going to need a hook centralizer down here as well, which we've conveniently left right here. So let's leave that right at the end of the path so it centralizes. Boop. Perfect. That's right in the middle. Nice. That's going to fall directly into the grinder. So now that we've got that, we want to get a couple more of these T pipes and line them in, don't we? All right, we figured it out. It took a wee while, but we figured it out. Maybe too many moving parts. So you need to remove some parts, like bits of the ground. Uh, it's, it's working fine now. Um, I think what was going wrong was that we just needed the drill to be mining dirt that was actually attached to the soil layer rather than it being attached to the drill itself. Because usually what you do is you take some dirt, you put it on the drill, and that just works, right? The other drills, that's how it functions. It's as easy as that. But this one seems to have the drill that goes further down. So if you stick it right into the dirt, then it turns. Oh, we need to actually power it first. Okay, uh, stick that one down in there under the drill. Perfect. Nice. So they're all functioning now. Nice. How's the hydrogenering going? Uh, we got everything working. And we've also figured out that the further back we go in the Ice Helm mine, not Ice Helm, yes, Ice Helm, in the dungeon mine, the further back we go, the better the resources, which is why we were not getting core stone, and it's why the machines were refusing to function in the last session right next to the water source. So we plugged in all of these. Uh, we've got a lot of prospecting guild tokens. We've got a tier three pickaxe by this point. We finally did that annoying quest. Uh, we crafted the only sword we'll ever need to craft again, hopefully. And now we're pumping out heaps and heaps of resources. Look at all this. So all of this, oh, who's actually, we want to turn all of this off, don't we? And there is a good reason for that. We want no damage to be applied to the machines. Oh, we don't even have a um, hook attached to this thing. Oh no. Oh no, that's not good. Is it up here? Is a water hook up here? No, okay. We've got to turn the machines off until we get ourselves a water hook. Let's go buy one, actually. I don't think we've got one just kind of... Oh, yeah, I actually saw some core stone. There, yes, perfect. So we do actually have core stone being mined out now. Some gold here, hopefully. I'm going to go up top, and I'm going to go and get a water hook valve, because we actually do desperately need it. We need to be able to shut off all of the machinery while we kind of get the uh, auto repair system up and running somewhere else. We don't want to waste the durability of the machines because they're going to be really annoying to fix. I think the T3 machines degrade the fastest. So we definitely need to be able to turn off that entire line of machinery. Oof, how much money we got? 220,000 bucks, 85. That's, that's, no, that's no loss. That's no loss whatsoever. All right, let's go up here and we will dump this straight onto the pipe. Uh, I'm probably going to play this for another half an hour before I move over to, over to Dragon's Dogma 2. Actually, what time is it? What time is it? Here I am. Is, yeah, no, I'm definitely going to move over to Dragon's Dogma 2 in about half an hour. So let's go ahead and hook this onto this pipe. Probably here, I suppose. Would be a good... Nope, that's sideways. <laughs> that's stupid. We don't want the pipe sideways. Uh, we want that straight pipe plugged back in now. Good. And now we want to set up this auto repair system that we already set up up here. Down on these pipes down here. So let's go ahead and just kind of like put them one away from that pipe, I suppose. Huh? Huh? Why can't I put it there? Huh? Oh, it's because there's a pipe in the way, right? All right, let's put that there. Put that one there. Put that one there. We'll move this pipe because I do want one huh? right there. Whoops. That's not huh? the problem at all. Uh, let's move this pipe. I think that's the problem. Put that one there. Yep, that was the problem. And five water hooks. Perfect. That's everything. That's everything we're ever going to need. Excellent. So, now we need to move uh, the entire... <laughs> God, this is going to be a pain. We're going to need the, to move the entire auto repair system up here that we had all the way downstairs. And I think the best way of doing that is just going to be to grab it and drop it off the ledge here. Okay, so this will probably be the most ideal place. We're probably going to have to mine that out so we can actually drop everything off this ledge. Or not. Yep, that's exactly what we want to do. Okay, good. Uh, drop all of these down here. We'll get these set up, and then we'll get the other ones set up while we turn the machines on. Simply because uh, the other two water filters, the other three water filters, probably aren't going to take as much damage as we progress as the first two in the chain. And as long as those ones are all set up, that's absolutely fine. I'm going. Best of luck. We'll look forward to your next stream. Hopefully your notification is good. Tick the bell and everything. Yeah, you'll definitely see it. I also... Uh, let people know in the community tab what I'm going to be playing and when I'm going to be playing about an hour in advance, so you'll definitely see it. Bye-bye. You enjoy your food. Uh, drop all of that down there. So we've made a huge mess. 
Well, I say we made a huge miss. We've actually also stacked up a bunch of stuff as well. We probably want to dismantle these pipes down here too because they're not doing anything anymore. And we need this lever as well. Let's go ahead and set up the lower sorting system. You know what? No, we're actually going to clean this place up a little bit. We'll get these pipes out of the way. We'll get the cart and we'll start sticking everything back in there because honestly, a, a clean workspace is good. A messy bed makes a messy head. Always make your bed. Huh? Okay, good. This one has to go in there. you got to like angle yourself whenever you put all of these things in there so that you can kind of like see them at a glance. Good. Uh, need more elbows. One elbow here. Good. Elbow there. Good. I got long arms. Good grief. That one can go there. That one goes there. Don't think I can reach any more of them, but we've got a lot of T pipes that need to go in here now too. Uh, let's stick it facing this way. Boop. Boop. And boop. And this is also a T pipe that's going in there. Great. Uh, we got more elbows just over here. Let's go ahead and pack these into the cart too. Probably from here. That one goes probably a little bit too close. Nope, too far away. Uh, oh, that's close enough, actually. That's close enough. Good, and this one's next. And if we can reach that one, we can't reach that one. Let's just go ahead and move a little bit. It's fine. Good, and then we've got a T-pipe, which goes right here. Nice, so that's the ones immediately out of the way. Now we can start making this uh, gigantic monstrosity. Uh, we've also got an intake pipe, which I'm probably just going to throw in the bin eventually. Uh, let's move these stairs, maybe like here and here, so that we have a, a nice line of exit. Yeah, I like this. Okay, good. And we'll probably want to get rid of those eventually, but they're not really in the way from what we want to do. Okay. So, uh, we probably actually want those on the opposite side of the... Or do we? No, we just want the spanner hurtling units here. We'll want one of these pointing basically that away. Good. Uh, we probably actually utilize those stairs as well to just walk along a big row of these. That's going to make life so much easier as well to re to kind of like fill back up the auto repair system because we're going to need to do that regardless. I could probably reach those ones from down here actually. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Good. 14. Perfect. I'm really glad that the sacks of, of utility tools don't just fly out of these every time we pick them up as well. Because a lazy developer would have just done that. Okay, I don't remember what this um, T was for. Yes, I do. It is for the levers. Put that one there. And we need a lot more. We don't need these pipes here anymore, so we'll move those out of the way. And we'll get all of these other little bits and bobs here. The durability reader, that one's really important. We'll place down all of these ones too. Hopefully in a way we can see, like so. Yeah, that should be good. And this one as well can go right beside it, there. We need this one to go right there. Need the other ones that we dropped on the ground over here to go here, and one more there, right there. Good, perfect. So that's gonna go there. Now we need to power these. We probably need a straight to come out the top of these. And the reason for that is we want the clear walkway here. Um, red's gonna go on the outside, so let's flip that over a couple of times. Good. Let's put that there. We'll put that one there. Uh, need more straights. That one can go there. Another straight goes here. And of course, oh, we can also do away with the giant mezzanine floor above our heads as well. And that one goes there. Uh, we probably need more of the straights. To be honest, let's just um, kind of filch them from the place that we already set them up. I'm going to flip this around like that. I like the red to be on the outside. I don't know why. It's more of a neurotic thing than anything else, to be quite honest. <sighs> Was it tomorrow or the next day? That's suggestion day. Uh, Thursdays and Fridays, the suggestion days. So I'll be going to... I'll be going to... I, I was going to do the most requested one on Friday, because that seems to be when the most people are online. And I don't really want to gatekeep anybody from being able to see them. Where are the other two straights? We should have two more straight cables. How are they? Oh, they've got hooks on them. That's right. Let's go ahead and just... Drop that, throw that mask on the ground because we don't ever want to use it again. Yuck. Oh, no, thank you. Why? I'm pixel hunting. <laughs> Alright, so there should be another one with a hook on it, right? But there's a hook right there. Which means there's no... There's no other straight. Okay. That's a little embarrassing, gotta be said. 
Wait, are these going the right way? I can't tell. Uh, I'm going to take this straight and I'm going to drop it on here just to make sure. Yes, it is definitely going the right way. There we go. Good. Excellent. So I'll put that one there. We probably need some more straight cables. Unless we just filch all of these ones, which I don't necessarily want to do. A lot of elbows. A lot of elbows indeed. Okay. So we need some T's to go bottom. Like so, right? Yeah, it's the same orientation. I'm happy with that. Don't really care how the T's are laid out, just as long as it's nice to look at from the other side. That's an elbow. Don't need that. We need more T's. Didn't we put the infrastructure for a, a full two down here? Why are we missing cables? That's so weird. Maybe we're not missing cables. Maybe I'm actually just crazy. I've lost the plot a little bit. Okay, let's get up here, and I'm going to take all of these things, and it's probably going to be a good idea to just drop them in this cart, right? Maybe we just manually grab them and throw them over the ledge, like this. Good. Throw these elbows over. Oh, there's a couple of straights right here. I think that's what we were missing, a couple of straights. That one can go over the, the ledge. That one can go over the ledge with its hook on it. I'm not, I'm not taking that off. That one can go there, that one can go there. Okay, we're getting pretty close to the edge. And I'm about to break. Oh no. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and just grab these, manually move them over, which is absolutely fine. I can do that. Grab that and throw that over the ledge. Now we just got straights and the levers, which I'm still pretty happy to pile up in a corner over there, like an absolute philistine. Go drop that down there. Go ahead and drop that over the ledge as well. Grab this here lever. Nice. Throw that over the ledge. I bet this is really good for the electrical equipment. If there's anything I've known about, like, really sensitive engineering machinery, it's that if you just throw it over a ledge in a, in a dark, dirty cave, it works as intended. Right, where are the rest of those levers? They're probably going to be congesting up most of this mess. Or not. Okay, let's go ahead and... We've got to move that mezzanine, don't we? No, we don't. Uh, we don't actually have to move that mezzanine whatsoever. Let's go ahead and just... Put these cablings down. All right, I'm okay, okay with that. It's not in the right orientation, but it's still good enough for what we need it for. It's just fine. A little lever there, but we'll have to reorient it. I'm just doing elbows right now. There, and we need another one. Perfect, right here. We still need another five elbows. They're kind of hard to find, actually. Good one there. Re oh, there they are. Nope, those are all T's. Half of them are T's. Okay. That one, and that one is also a elbow. Good. That's an elbow. Perfect. Let's go ahead and link that one. Nope. Link that one up there. And we need one more elbow, which is right in front of us. Perfect. Whoops. Missed that. Put that there. I'm happy with this. Let's go ahead and start sticking the other straights on top. Because we need to do so. All right. How's that? That's oriented like absolute ass, but it kind of matches up with this one, so that's fine, I guess. All right, where are the rest of the straights? This one here can go on that. It's also facing downwards, which is exactly what we want for these hooks. Perfect. How much you got left of this tier of automation before the DLC? This is the last tier of automation. Uh, we're just getting basically unlimited core stones so that we can go and talk to the king, harass him uh, a little bit with uh, all of his quests being basically just blown out of the water in a single session. And then we're going to go and have a crack at the DLC, which is actually looking really interesting. It's got magma. It's got magma pipes instead of, like, water. It does have water, but it's also got, like, lava and stuff like that. And I'm very excited to see what the lava is going to add to the game. It's probably... Honestly, it's probably not going to be much different to what we've already seen, but I'm still happy to kind of, like, go and see another aspect of this game before we just kind of, like, 100% dust it off, polish it off, tick it off, get everything out of the way. Done and dusted. All right, let's go ahead and put these levers down. Where are the rest of them? That's a construction hammer. That shouldn't be there, otherwise we'll lose it. A lot of elbows. A lot of elbows that I don't think we need. Why have we got elbows? We also need a couple of T's. Uh, we'll do the levers first. Because they're kind of hard, tricky to find, honestly. All right, that's good. Need two more. There's one right there. And I'm going to just knock it straight there because we're going to link it up anyway. Good. And one more lever. Where'd it go? Where did it go? 
stuck on an invisible wall right there. That's weird. Ah. Huh. That's weird. I thought we actually did have five levers on account of us, uh... You know. Having five of them fully made up there. Maybe I left it up topside. Let's go check. Let's go check. Uh, nothing up here. I don't really see any levers. Did I, I didn't drop it on the conveyor belt, did I? No, because it would have just ended up at the end of there anyway. There's nothing around here that we can necessarily use to figure out where it went. That's annoying. That's very annoying. Okay, uh, there is an elbow right there. We may need another el uh, another lever, which we're going to have to make a trip out into town to go and get, which is why that's annoying. Yeah, okay. A couple of T's over here. A bunch of T's, a bunch of elbows. We'll do these uh, T's. We'll do these T junctions. Right there. Uh, this one can go right here. Be good. Nice. Uh, do we need any more T's? I don't actually think we do. Weird. Why have we got so many elbows? We wanted to be able to walk through this gap right here. So what's wrong with this whole setup? Elbow, 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 and a T-junction that we probably used as an elbow. Why don't we have straights? Oh. I think I know. These are supposed to go like that. Right. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I'll put that there, put that there. Put that there. Put that there. Uh, which is a little bit annoying because now the, um, the lever is oriented strange. I want to flip that around. Yeah, make it upside down a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Put that there. Put that there. Where the hell is that last lever? I'm certain we had one. Weird. Super strange. I do... I I don't think it fell on the conveyor belt, because we wouldn't have been able to throw it on the conveyor belt. Unless it's, like, stuck up... Oh, there it is. <laughs> it was floating in the sky. That's pretty funny. Uh, let's go ahead and put that there. And now, since we've got all these elbows, we can just kind of bump these in, too. I'm also going to look in the cable cart, see if we don't have another single elbow, because uh, now that we kind of, like, can see everything in HD, 1080p quality, we don't really want to be seeing loose wiring hanging out because it bothers me specifically all right put that there where is the cable cart i thought we didn't we put all the conveyors in the cable cart which would put it over here right so is there an elbow in here there's a hook right there yes nice perfect i love that i love when a plan goes right so we now have a a spear whatever the hell that thing is a t-junction and we're never going to use it quite frankly so all of these should be enabled if we start using the magnifying glass which is just over yonder's reach right there uh we'll see how much durability that first hook has what is it 10 percent is it 10 yeah it's 10 percent so this is definitely going to auto repair it or the entire workflow is going to stop either way uh we've pretty much finished that great perfect i love that Okay, I didn't mean to jump against the ladder. That's silly. Why would anybody want to do that? Good. Okay, so that's all done and dusted. Now we have the auto repair system pretty much generating money. We've still lost a machine. I don't know where it went. That's super weird. Okay. So now we want to turn this bad boy on, don't we? With this hook right here. Done. Excellent. You know, we probably could have a durability reader... At the end of here, and every time it reaches zero, because this is the last water hook filter in the workflow chain, whenever it reaches zero, we could just have it turn off a valve right at the start over here. And then we have to manually enable it, which would turn off all of the machinery. Ah, oh, but the water hook does it anyway. But then we could still fill the auto repair system, and then it would just kind of like. It would just go. It would just go. Until it can't anymore. All right, how much of this core stone do we have? Let's try and build another couple of machines. We have 29 kilos. That is bugger all. That is literally nothing. Oh, well, at least we're getting core stone. That's the thing, though. We're getting core stone. This grinder is still pulling its weight like crazy as well. Gonna go work on playing Dead Space 2 when you start Dragon's Dogma 2. I'm yet to play, so just try and... Just go get spoilers. What are you playing, sorry? You're playing Dead Space 2. 
When I play Dragon's Dogma 2, it'll be when I consider that I have beaten Dragon's Dogma, honestly. Um, Capcom have more or less fixed a lot of the frame rate issues that a lot of people were experiencing on launch. And I, it was Dragon's Dogma 2 that forced me to buy that new 40 series graphics card, which I still do not regret. Uh, I sank probably 150 hours straight into that game immediately. Then I got a little bit of burnout. I'm taking a wee bit of a break from it. And I'll get back to it essentially as soon as I finish Dragon's Dogma because I do love the series so, so much. I do not want to kind of like let that one collect dust, so to speak. I'll probably be playing that one until Silent Hill 2 comes up, most likely. Okay. Oh, I thought you said that's what you were playing after this. I've said a lot of things. Um, that sounds like something I would have said before I set up the, the voting system, or at least implemented the voting system, because that's only been up for a couple of days now. Or has it only been up for a day? No, it's only been up for a day. The voting system's only been up for a day, so. There's gonna be three days at the start of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That is when I am going to be choosing the games. And then the two games at the, two days at the end of the week, Thursday, Friday, that's gonna be the request days. Okay, good. That is spewing out resources. I actually love this. This is an awesome little bit of production. I wonder if there's a water hook to uh, get lights. Because I know there's a logic hook to get lights. Maybe I, we should just get a lighting system made of logic. Let's do that, actually. Because we're pretty much now just waiting for the core stone to accrue. I think. We've still got a few minutes left. Uh, I'm going to take one of these cards. Probably the... Probably a new card, actually. Let's, let's just go get a new card altogether. Which I'm pretty sure we've got money for on the back of the ute. And we'll go and buy a bunch of lights so that we can actually see what we're doing. That's probably a really good idea, right? So far it looks like Minecraft is Thursday, Nightmare House 2 Friday. Ah, you catch on quick. You catch on very quick. I'm actually pretty excited to play both of those games. The reason I picked those the games on the YouTube polls in the first place is because they have consecutive game requests that are that fit the same genre. And I think there's a, a couple of games that double up on, on the same genre. But at the same time, there are like the open world crafting ones that people are insisting that I play on mass. There are so many of those. There are lots and lots of little one and done horrors that people are insisting I play in like five hour sittings, which I can do. I can definitely do that. I'm pretty excited for them. I'm less excited for Subnautica, to be honest, because uh, I'm afraid of the ocean and I, I, <laughs> I don't want to go down there. I'll do there if I have to. Like if my ship literally crashes on the planet, I will go down there to survive, but I don't want to. I'm afraid of sharks alone. Just, just sharks give me the willies. Uh, this isn't the car we want. We want the big huge because it's got the money in the back. Hopefully. Yes! Almost a million buckery boos right in the back of this huge. This is probably the most expensive truck in the history of this save file. Or even the history of my games. I don't think I've got this far with the T3 machinery. Usually I unlock the T3 machinery and I'm all like, oh yeah, that's kind of cool. And then I... I feel satisfied enough with the game to put it down and then come back to it a couple of months later it's just kind of like a oh yeah i remember that puzzle game that was so much fun maybe i'll try and get a little bit further but i never play the same save i always like start a brand new save every time i've uh, wanted to play this game because i always kind of like lose track of uh what i'm doing oops how do we crash right there oopsies that's fine i'll go up here and we'll pop into the powerhouse right over here but we're not going to stay here. We're actually going to take our money. We're going to buy another cart for the power stuff. Uh, because we have set the other power cart to be the conveyor cart. And we are going to need a lot of conveyor belts. So it's, it's probably just responsible to have a cart for that alone. If only there was like another cart that was just like, I don't care, a million bucks. But it had both agile and fast traits. It's one of those things I would pay a premium for. We probably want the agile... No, this is going to be electrical stuff, so let's go ahead and get a fast wooden cart. No, we want agile, because we can, we're, we're just going to stick this in the back of the ute anyway. We want the turning speed more so than the actual speed itself, because we're not going to be walking around with this cart too much. Not This is probably going to be the longest path that we walk with this cart on our backs right here, from here to the power shop. All right, there's one guy over here. He doesn't have a quest for us, so he's a complete waste of my time. I shouldn't have even acknowledged his or her existence. What a dick. Okay, so a lot of lights, I think, in here. We're going to need a lot of levers, I think, for this. And we're also going to need a lot of straight cabling. Kind of polish it off, right? Where are the lights? 
Okay, let's just get a bunch of these straight cables anyway, because we're probably going to want to wire up the entire workshop with lights. And we probably just want to get a single lever as well to turn the lights on and off. Might be a good idea. All right, I'm getting lots and lots of these logic cables. We're going to make a huge mess of electricity, I think. Okay, good. Put all of this down here. And we're also going to need a lot of T-pipes, I think, so that we can split off and start planting lots and lots of the lights themselves. Where are they, actually? Don't be a Where are they? Make an auto repair machine to fix it. Not over you. here. Are they over here? Oh, there they are. Underneath the table. Okay, good. So I hope that's really, really bright. We're going to find out very soon anyway. The one and done Spooker's Minecraft theme horror game is about 23 minutes max. Oh, maybe I'll play that one. Although I seem to remember you, remember you insisting that I don't play the next custom story until I've played a bunch of these other games uh, that I'm probably not going to get to in the near future, but I'm, I may get to them later when I've got a little bit more confidence in my channel. Because at the moment, I am still kind of at the mercy of copyright and content ID holders, and it's definitely biting me in the ass now that I'm playing Undertale. Every single one of those videos is now getting copyright claimed and rejected by the uh, copyright holders, which is exactly the opposite of what Toby Fox wanted for his music, but at the same time, I don't have a say in the matter uh, because I don't hold the copyright claim. All I have is um, just him publicly saying, um, uh, try and dispute the claim, and every single time it'll get released, which isn't working anymore somehow, so I tweeted that at him as well. Just to let him know that his, um, his ID management company is, is garbage, <laughs> that he needs to go with someone who's not an absolute idiot. Because they've got a reputation. It's Materia Publishing. And they've got the CEO named Sebastian Wolf, who kind of, he makes a habit of making really public apologies and saying, oh, we're not going to do this ever again. I'm so, so sorry about my severe and continuous lapse in judgment. Oh, it's never going to happen again. Please take pity on me. I don't know what I'm doing. And now, five years later, after he first made started making those statements, he's do still doing the exact same thing. And all he just does is release apologies. And then he doesn't change it. He just apologizes and says, oh, it was all out of ignorance. And then again, doesn't change anything. He just continues to do these crappy, stupid, hostile actions that he was told not to do by his clients. I don't know how the Materia music publishing is honestly still around. It's just a garbage place. Oh, just Nightmare House 2 and Cry of Fear is what I said. Wasn't there also a, uh, a custom story that you wanted me to play Slender the Eight Pages for? I seem to remember that. That's six grand. Okay, that's fine. I thought it was going to be significantly more expensive than that. Let's go ahead and grab a heap of these lights. Okay. So I think these spanner hurtling units are probably just the most expensive parts in the store anyway. Because usually getting, I don't know, a tenth of what we are buying right now costs us 20 grand. And we've only hit a quarter of that so far. We've only hit a quarter of the 10 grand. Get all of these lamps. I love lamp. I love lamp. I had a big red candle. Big red candle. Well, you already played Slender. I've played so much of it, my man. I haven't played Slender The Arrival. I didn't play any of the games after it because I just had so much kind of like exposure burnout from that <laughs> Slender The Eight Pages when it first came out. I was just not motivated to dive into the universe of it. But I haven't played any of the other Slender games. Now you just got to play Nightmare House 2 and Cry of Fear. I'm excited for Cry's, Cry, of House, uh, Cry of Fear 2. I don't know about Nightmare House. I'm not sure if I'm going to love it. The first one was really fun, but it was so, so buggy. It came out as an edited thing, I think. And not just like a, a big, like, one take, one and done. But I probably spent about four hours playing it because frequently it crashed. Very frequently it crashed. And it didn't let you save at very obvious pivotal points of the game either. Okay, good. Until I found out that you had to manually save every single time as well. All right, we got a little bit of frame drop with the, uh, the power cart, ironically. Okay, let's go ahead and jump up onto the back of Lofty here. Good. And we are driving away. I love how there's no frame drop when you're not pulling the cart. That's so funny. All right, so come all the way over here. This way. I wonder where you get frame drop. It's not like they're individually moving every single model in the back of that cart because you can't look behind you. You literally can't move your mouse while you are moving the cart. So it would make zero sense to be able to see what's in the cart while you're pulling it. It would make no sense whatsoever. Maybe that is actually a thing, though. I think you can blame co-op on this. But it's, it, again, that's not streamlined either. Nightmare House 2 is so good. Didn't crash once, once for me. Nice. Okay. 
Well, that fills me with a little bit more confidence. I'm, I was very, very apprehensive about it. Okay. Let's get on the lag cart and we'll move this down into the depths of our dungeon. Good grief. Is this actually turning up with like lots of frame drop for you guys as well? Because I don't know if the recording's the same as the, uh, you know, the cart itself. Okay, so this is going to give us a little bit of busy work to do in the next session. There will be a next session, by the way. There is going to be another session that we play of this. Oh, penis. We just missed it by a millimeter. We just missed the bridge. Now we have to turn with this goddamn lag on us. Oh, you know what? Screw this, actually. I'm just going to look in the direction I want to go, and then I'm going to use the cart. Okay, so we're going to set up a lighting system so that we can see what we're doing in the next uh, episode. There will be a next episode, because we are nowhere near what we're supposed to be doing. What the hell? Are you taking the piss? Why is the grinder broken? No shot! That's why it's lagging so bad. Oh, no way. That's so annoying. Okay, uh, we've nailed all of those down. We've got to turn off the entire system. Right over here. Whoop. Whoopsie daisies. Okay, I've got a technique for this as well. Clear all dirt chunks. No, I'll do that in the next episode. But yeah, essentially, um... Oh, God. We didn't want this to crash. We didn't want this to break. We want this hooked up to the other machines. Okay, so we don't want it hooked up to the conveyor system. That is actually really, really annoying. I think I have a solution. If we take these pipes and we hook it up and over, we could probably bump it into that bend right there on a T-pipe. Let's do that before we end the episode, actually. Uh, just while it's fresh in my mind. We need a T-junction. T-junction! T-time! T. Right here. Good. And we want this elbow off there, and we want that to be placed right uh, there. Good. And now we want this not to be going up from the conveyor belt, which has made a huge mess, and we'll replace that in the next episode, I think, as well. Let's go ahead and move all of this. We want a elbow to be right here. Whoops. And like that. Good. And we want to straight with the valve on that. Right here. Excellent. And now we want a elbow right up here. Huh? Okay. We can't do that because the dirt's in the way. All right, that seems like an issue for next episode, and I'm not going to pick up all of those um, blocks of dirt with the command that does so. We'll just kind of like, we'll take we'll take a step back and look at the uh, kind of like the joys of what we've already created. How does that sound? That sounds great, doesn't it? All right, so thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Right up here, you're going to find the playlist for Hydra Nero, and right up here, you're going to find another playlist that I think you'd really enjoy. Just down here beside these nuts, you're going to find a link to my Discord where you can check to me and my community personally. And until I make the next episode, or... You catch the next stream, hint hint. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye!